What is going on, guys? Welcome to the Wednesday Night Live stream. Now, one of the questions that I get asked all the time is people, or I see constantly as comments where people have been like, the hobby's too expensive, you know, what's the cheap option or the best bang for buck? Like, I see those posts constantly. So I kind of figured today would be a good one to talk about budget reefing and kind of ways to do it on a more affordable level. Well, today I have Moki, aka an appropriate reaper. How are you doing today? Pretty good. How are you doing? That yeah. it's been a while since I've uh, gone on live stream with you. It feels like I know it's been far too long. I'm doing excellent. Thank you. How about you? Pretty good. Pretty good. Um, I see some of your vacationing photos. Looks like you're uh, going to some interesting places and fun places. That uh, was fun. I went to what's Wells Gray Provincial Park, which was about four and a bit hours away from here and went camping and they have like waterfalls that are like three, 400 feet tall. And we like hiked behind some. It was really cool. So that was a lot of fun. Dude, that's awesome. Yeah, I miss traveling, and uh, hopefully this whole thing ends soon. Yep, I'm, I'm with you. That was like my mini trip. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Got to sneak away. So actually, speaking of tanks, how's yours doing behind you? You're not so budget. It's doing better. <laughs> um, I feel like I went through a couple rough patches with it. Uh, I got some algae bloom and stuff like that, but I think those are pretty much handled. Uh, I was recommended a really nice, surprisingly, uh, UV sterilizer for about $80 and Ooh. just kind of clear up the water within a day. It was ridiculous. Nice. Um, so that was a nice surprise. Uh, but beyond that, for the most part, it seems pretty stable. Uh, so I still need to find the cause of the bacteria or algae bloom. But for the most part, I feel like it's on the right track. Nice, that's promising. Are you dosing anything that would make a bacteria bloom, like carbon sources or anything? Well, I have been feeding pretty heavy because mm -hmm. I'm keeping a couple MPS in there. Got a fedendro sun coral nice. and two little frags of uh, black sun corals. Ooh, and you know how it is when you feed corals that likes to take food in, you just keep going, right? So I feel like I may be overfeeding. Mm -hmm. um, and the refugium is pretty much non-existent at the moment. I've been trying to grow some like red dragon breath in there, but they're not, they're simply not taking. So I may just start growing some chato in there. Hopefully they'll balance things out and allow the tank to kind of take in more of the nutrients. Nice. That's awesome. You got MPS is really cool. I love those. So I got yeah. fat head dendro. I don't have sun corals. So I haven't had those in ages, but how do you like the black one? You don't see those very often. Uh, to me so far, they seem a little bit tougher. Like they're not as aggressive in terms of grabbing the food, but they are interesting. Like yeah. they're really nice contrast when you put them together with like sun coral and fat dendros. Nice. Well, that's pretty cool. Uh, have you trained them to be open all in the daytime yet? Trying. I mean, the fat dendro and sun coral do pretty well. As mm -hmm. soon as they smell food in the water, they just pfft, right open. Yeah. The black, uh, the black sun corals, they take a little convincing. It takes maybe like five, 10 minutes to really come out. Mm -hmm. And then even then it'll only take the smaller particle of foods, but hopefully over time they'll get a little bit stronger, a little bit more aggressive. Yep. That'll be good. It's just the biggest thing I have found when I used to have sun corals was just making sure you feed them, you know, kind of in the middle of the day every day and get them used to that kind of schedule. And then they'll just be yeah. open in the daytime eventually. Totally. Totally. Shiny. Um, now I think like the biggest challenge is juggling that water quality. I feel like it may be the cause of the, uh, bacteria or algae bloom, but I'm not hundred percent sure because I can't really stop feeding it. So we will see. We will see. Um, this is a nice experiment for another tank that I plan to set up a little bit further down the road, uh, which we can talk about a little bit later. Nice. Oh, that'll be awesome. Some more tanks in the works, eh? I like it. Yeah. Yep. Oh, when you're stuck at home, right? You're just like, uh, one more tank. Yeah. I'm still working on consolidating my goals to get to two tanks. There's one on either side of me right now, but we're getting closer. <laughs> How's that going? How's that going? Well, overall, it's good. I have a gorgeous tank beside me, but it... it uh, ended up showing up a, a little bit shorter than I ordered. So it's, <laughs> okay. it's a, a foot shorter than it's supposed to be. So I'm waiting yeah, we, for the replacement. Uh, but that is coming soon, right? Soonish? Yeah, in a couple of weeks. Probably three to four weeks would be my guess. So sucks waiting another cool. month. But it's still, you know, 12 by 28 inches of frag space, which is a lot of real estate in a frag tank. Totally. So that is. Can't wait to see you set that up. It's going to be awesome. I'm excited. I'm actually really curious to see what kind of equipment you go with because yeah. I know like you've done reviews on all these different equipments. You have access to uh, pretty much all of them. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's actually one thing I, I like to, to see like the people that talk about different equipments. What do they personally go with? Yep. That's kind of like, oh, okay, all right. That's what you guys actually, you know. So we'll see. That's good. Well, a lot of it I'm going to be stealing from the other frag tank. And then I don't know if you saw the video I did on that calcium reactor I won in a Facebook contest. So I'm going to put that on there. And a few nice. other things, but yeah, should be good. All right. Well, I guess we're not going to talk about calcium reactor today with uh, <laughs> budget reefing, huh? No, that's that's not so budget. It's a, it's a pricey investment. Even even the shipping on that thing cost me a small fortune to get it, but still, it was, it was still a good deal relative to a new one. But it was freaking expensive, so so yeah. 
So on on the side of budget reefing, because the calcium reactor shipping probably costs as much as a small reef tank. Um, so you've had a few budget reefs yourself. I know the thumbnail for this one was actually your, well, a photo of your old tank. Yeah. I think the one, the photo uh, from the thumbnail is probably a 10 gallon tank I had during my college years, which was mm -hmm. a long time ago. Uh, I've had, actually, I feel like most of my reefing quote unquote career has been pretty much a budget, re, uh, budget reef tank. Mm -hmm. uh, not only budget, but also kind of like uh, low tech, yeah. like, kind of like freshwater. You have like high tech, low tech, right? To me, a low tech reef tank, at least in, in my book, is like no sump, mm -hmm. um, kind of like no skimmer. Basically, it's essentially a fishbowl. I should rely on maybe like mechanical filtrations and maybe some medias in the hang on the back filter and that's you pretty much it. You don't even need that. Like, I mean, technically, I just, I don't know why I just thought of this now, but I have a temporary tank I set up, which was literally the sump of my old tank. So it's like a three foot by whatever tank and there yeah. is a power head, a heater and a light on it and that's it. Like that's as budget as it gets. There is no... That's that's all you need. That's Honestly, all you that's need. all you need. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I'm just like, oh, yeah, how do you have a budget tank at the moment? Um, and that's like my temporary tank. Yeah. And that's been running for ages because I just ran out of space for stuff. <laughs> yeah, so. and I think like um, I think my first probably four tanks. Let me see, like a 30-gallon, a 10-gallon, a 20-gallon, and then a 65-gallon. They're all like that, no sump. Uh, mm -hmm. Basically just like power head, one, one power head, one of two. Um, two of them no, don't even have a power head, just like a... Uh, power hang on the back filter providing mm -hmm. the um, the water circulation yep. and also a place to put like medias and back then I didn't I didn't even know about like uh, stuff like marine pure mm -hmm. Biomedia it's essentially just like a bag of like GFO or carbon and caught a day Yeah, uh, and just rely on water change otherwise that that's so, a good yeah. way to go like one of my easiest tanks was probably the Red Sea little 20 gallon all in one tank. I did nothing nice. but do well, I dosed it like two or three mils a day but aside from that, I did like a, a one bucket water change every week or two. That was it. And the tank's ride. It was nice. happy. Like obviously Red Sea is not a budget tank, but yeah. same thing. A little 20 gallon tank. That's it. That's all you got to do. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm kind of curious. Like you said you were dosing. Uh, were you dosing like off a reef or? Um, no, I just used just my own little kind of DIY raw chemicals like car calcium carbonate and sodium bicarbonate. So just basic dosing. That's cool. And yep. you kept enough corals in there to justify like oh, dosing yeah. for like helping well, calcium. Did, well, did you see the rock flower tank that I had? Like the 20 yes. gallon nano? Yeah. Was that, was that it? Yeah. You dosed that tank? Yeah. Wow. Well, okay. I had acros in there too. Oh, okay. 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 I just saw all the rock flower. I'm just like. Yeah. They, they sold the show because if you look top down, it was just nothing but rock flowers, which was amazing. Um, and did fawn too? They did. Yep. I got a few babies, which is awesome. And then I put my, I took my 12 or 13 favorites and put them in the big tank. And then yeah. I still got like a little tray of like probably 13 or so in this tank. And I think there's a little baby or two in there still. Just get through. That's awesome. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, rock flower is one of those like I wanted to go in, but I've never had a chance yet. So yeah. at some point, hey, maybe I ask you for some tips. Sounds good. I should turn the chamber of my sump into a rock flower tank in the new tank. That'd be cool. That would be cool. Ooh, this might happen. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, okay. So budget tank, um, all the ones are awesome if you get a good deal on one because you can hide yep. your stuff. It's basically a built-in sump. Do you need a sump? No. Is it nice? Mainly for aesthetic reasons because you can hide stuff in it, right? You don't want to see your heaters. You don't want to see all that stuff. Um, so back in the day, my very, very first reef tank was, uh, what was it, a fluval, fluval edge, like a 12-gallon tank. And I had a little cobalt neotherm heater, and I just hit it right behind the rocks. You didn't even see it. Nice. A little aqua clear filter and a bag of carbon. That's it. That's all I had in it. And I think eventually yep. I added a little dinky Jabo power head in there and super simple tank. Um, yeah, really easy to do. The only pain in the butt thing with that thing, if you put your hand in the tank, it would overflow. So you had to watch that uh, one. See, I have not done like a tiny tank like that. Um, I've done like a reef jar, but that never really took off. Mm -hmm. But the smallest tank I've ever attempted is like 10 gallon. Um, I think back then I didn't even use a auto top off system. Mm -hmm. But I feel like that's one of the things that I would really invest in, even if it's a budget. Even though on a budget, you could possibly do it as well because yep. they have those like 3D printed little, little, little adapter for like a upside down soda yep. can or a water Super bottle. Super easy to make. Yeah. Is, do you even, so you've tried it before? Or, what, what I mean, my, one of my friends did. Yeah, one of my buddies did. It was the like, same thing, a Voss water bottle. It's, it's like a little hydrostatic one. So you basically have your little air hole at the water line. And whenever that breaks that, it will fill out and it hits it. It creates that little barrier again and stops it. It's just like the pet bowls even, right? You see they're upside down. Yeah. Same thing. See, I wish I knew about that like back in the days. Like back then, I'm just like dumping water in and I feel like yeah. that probably accounted for a lot of uh, instability thinking back. 
Yeah, probably true. Yeah. I, I still have some. I have the one with the Bergias on the floor behind me, too. And even that one, I just, like, I put a chunk of acrylic on top to reduce evaporation. I just add some to it every, like, three or four days. But not too bad. But automated is better. Yeah, totally. Uh, so I think, like, that's if there's one thing that I wouldn't skimp on, probably an auto-top-off auto system. Yep. And the second thing uh, is probably the lights. That would be the next piece that I'm probably mm-hmm. willing to put a little bit more money towards. And it's interesting because somebody, um, Q-Balls Reef, actually talked about budget budget lightings as well. Yeah. Um, I'll let you run it. I'm not sure if you want to tackle a different it. aspect what's, of budget, what's budget your, tank. Or... What's your go-to for budget lighting? Oh, uh, it's tough. <laughs> so I think like um, I'm not the most up to date in terms of like what's popular right now. I know about year and a half, two years ago, the uh, Aqua Knights is like all the rave, right? People yeah. in Nano Reef use it. Uh, since then, I know a couple different lights came out. Mm-hmm. I even heard about um, this is like Sci Noop or something like that. I Noop's honestly like, I forgot the name. Those. Name was- yep, Noop Sykes. I've had those. Um, they're good bang for your buck. Like they're okay. I w- on a bigger budget tank. I'd say that's an excellent option. Um, on a smaller budget tank, I'd probably use AI Primes because I think that's really good value for your that's money. Still, that's still about How much is the um, the other light that you're talking about? The Noop Because I know people recommend it for like SPS and stuff too. Yep. Um, they're pretty good like wattage output for their size. The controller is a little old school because it's very like the dial and you push it and turn it and got to program it. Okay. Um, that's, but, but the light themselves are really good value. How much are we talking about? Do you know a rough price price point since we're talking about budget? I don't remember. I'm Googling them right now. Okay. Sorry. Yep. Like okay. randomly throwing things at you. Yeah, that's fair. This is good. We're going on the fly here. Noob Psych, 95 well, watt LED. They are uh, 154 bucks. That's not, that's not bad at all. No, for that's something what I mean. That can they're they're cheap. Stuff yeah, for, for a videos. 90 watt light, they're cheap. So. And I know um, back then the Blackboard... Black box has mm-hmm. been really popular. Uh, yeah. They're proven, not as controllable, but they're proven. Yeah. But nowadays, I feel like there maybe like new light came out that kind of replaced it as a nice budget. I, I would hands down say the noob psych over the black box type style lights okay. because you can ramp it, you can have control over it, right? Rather than just on or off, white or blue, right? Yeah. Um, I know Telegram recently tested some light out too. It's like um, the AliExpress light bar is, seems to be a good supplemental light for uh, other lights out there. Hmm. And I know um, Remy Bahama Lama is also talking about like $100 light panel. Yeah. There are a lot of things out there. there, um, there I wish I have a chance to test all of them. There really is. There's like I have a coral care on this tank I'm testing out. Like there's so many options now. It's crazy. I mean, that's not a budget light, but there's it's crazy how many options there are now. And, I've I've even DIY lights in the past too, like super budget. Yeah. Like I took apart an old stereo amplifier, and I took the big heat sink out of it, and ordered a bunch of LEDs off eBay, and just like soldered on and made my own light. I use that for a frag tank for ages. So you can, if you get a little bit handy, you can do stuff super cheap. Or easiest way is just find someone shutting out a tank or selling stuff cheap, and then buy it used. Yeah, I think that's probably my favorite approach: buy used gear. Um, like my previous Radeon. It was a G1. I bought it with my tank, right? Um, mm-hmm. Bought it used, and I just upgraded to a G3. And a lot of my reefing gear, uh, well, at least I like used to be, uh, I bought it used. And I think that's where I find a lot of great values. And that's um, how the local reef club really come into play as well. I feel like I got a lot of great deals on there. Mm-hmm. Now, now, on the flip side of the coin, yes. even though Budget Light is fantastic, I do have to say um, sometimes you do pay a little bit extra for mm-hmm. the user experience as well. For example, like the Radions, I've been a big fan of them, not just because the light is powerful enough where I can kind of tweak it, mm-hmm. but also the use, uh, user experience. Like yeah. it's so easy to tweak the lights, set schedule, et cetera, do scenes, et cetera, et cetera. So there's something something to be said. But if mm-hmm. I'm going to budget it, totally, totally doable for like $100, $150, no problem. Yeah. Okay. So that that's the biggest thing, right? And a lot of these lights, like most of them are going to grow coral, right? Will it grow your core? Will it keep it alive? Yes. Um, where it comes down to is like the extra colors of LEDs, you know, maybe some can penetrate better, maybe some a better spread, or maybe it has a nice app or is really easy to tweak and customize it, yeah. or using some like really old school controller and limited control. So you are paying for a lot of those user experience and little add-ons and stuff, right? It's definitely what you get with the premium versus the budget. So so hold on, hold on, Devin. Let me, let me pause it right here, all right? Pause so away. Let's put it a little bit more... Um, Implementable or practical. Yes. Okay. You're setting up a budget tank right now. Let's two two versions. One okay. simple tank, one budget tank. Okay. Let's go budget first. Okay. Budget light, what would you go with? Uh, what size tank? Ooh, um, since we're, let's say 15 gallon. I think 15 gallon is a nice size. Personally, I'd probably... You still get away with it. I would do an AI Prime, personally. That's what I would pick. 
It's okay. a little. Is it a, yeah, Prime, yeah, Prime HD or yeah, Prime HD? They're they're pretty inexpensive, relatively. Okay. Well, how much are they? For looking. Bulk resupply, one sixty. Yeah, one hundred sixty bucks isn't That's bad. Not, yeah. So that's not bad. Um, like, there are other options. I've seen, I don't know, Reef Builder says one I've seen on a bunch of tank. It's like this little domey one, which is fairly inexpensive. I've seen that. I mean, that's probably what I would pick for a smaller tank. Um, I'm with you. Yeah. AI Prime. Yeah, usually when people ask me, like, what light would you prefer um, uh, for something affordable, I'll usually say, like, uh, use Radeons, like, mm-hmm. Odergen, totally fine. Yep. Or the AI Prime, but, uh, go, usually going for the HD. Yeah, but if they want something a little bit more affordable. Usually, I just say Alcon Knight simply because I've used it. Mm-hmm. Uh, recently, Jim lent me a Pixie. I think it's two point zero. It's like mm-hmm. a little pug. It has a little bit. Seems to have a little bit more wattage than the uh, Alcon Knight, but it's like a square, a single puck versus like Apparently. a better spread. But that's a really nice light as well. Nice. Someone else cool. is suggesting the Lumi Light LED. So I, I've actually seen that one in photos. I haven't actually used it before, but little guy. Oh. Gifts. <laughs> Thanks. Um, yeah, so I haven't used Lumi LED. Someone else, that one's only 50 bucks. It doesn't look quite Ooh. as high wattage output, but on a small tank, that could be a good way to go. I yeah. don't know. I don't even know about that lights. So I have to check it out. That's yeah. cool. 70 bucks for the reef one. Yeah, so it really depends. Um, small tank, obviously, I mean, probably plenty. The bigger the tank, the more spread you want, then you got to up it a little bit of juice from there. Yeah. Yep. Uh, budget oh. tank. What kind of corals? What you stock in the tank? Okay, we'll go to corals in a little bit. Let's talk about the gear. First. Sure. Okay. Okay. So, what's okay. your choice? What's your budget uh, like? AM Prime HD. Okay. Or use Radeon. I think that's the way I'll go. <laughs> if I need to go a little bit cheaper, or um, I if it's a cube. Oh no, it's 15 gallon. I'll probably stick with the Aqua Knights. But if mm-hmm. it's a cube, I'll probably do um, what Jim lent me, the Pixie, because it's like a nice little nice little puck, and okay. I think it's emulated well. Nice. I think I know what one cool. that is now, actually. Okay. Yeah. Um, budget tank. Would you just go to Petco buck a gallon sale? Would you get something fancier? What oh, would you do? no. Okay. Uh, he, this is where I'll actually drop some money as well. Okay. As much as I like to save money on tank, mm-hmm. I don't really want to see the black trim. I yeah. would go uh, rimless. Yep. Okay. I'll go rimless. That's that's one thing. Like I, Every time like, I look at a budget, budget tank, I was like, mm, I wish the trim is not there. I could cut it, but at the same time, I feel like I'm compromising the integrity. I know mm-hmm. people have done it with no problem, but I'm just kind of nervous about it. But if I were to actually do a uh, not like the lowest cost budget tank, I would do rimless. Yeah, no, I, I'm, I'm with you. Uh, <laughs> if I was like super budget or quarantine or temporary tank, yeah. rim tanks are fine. But for display, personally, I'm a big fan of rimless too. It's Yeah. You... yeah. I was going to say I actually just bought a tank yesterday. From... What would you get? Was it? I think it's a uh, is Marine Depot um, lifeguard. It, it's one of those uh, similar to like one of the house brands um, like Miss Aqua and stuff like that, yep. except it's cut at forty five degrees. Mm, and nice. I got a nine gallon tank. It's like seventy bucks. So there are a lot nice. of cheap rimless tank. It doesn't have to be like two three hundred dollars. Do you know what else actually made like amazing little nano tank? My auto top up container from the water box. It was like Dude. this gorgeous 20 gallon polished edge. And like, this is a beautiful, this is like the nicest auto top up container I've seen. And that turned into a tank. <laughs> you know, the funny you mention it because mm-hmm. when the motor curum came, it has like this little, I'm not sure if you can see it, it has a little auto top up. That's kind of like a funky shape. Yeah. It's like a tall rectangle. It's really skinny, but it's tall. Mm-hmm. But I feel like it's going to look amazing uh, if I can turn it into some kind of reef tank or even like a planted tank. So it's kind of it's kind of weird. Like us reefers, we look at a little container, glass container, just yeah. to like, Oh, exactly, 100%. Um, so super tiny budget tank. I can't really see with the camera, but it, those little flu spec, it's a little five-gallon rectangle, little tiny peninsula. I mean, yeah. I got one of those for free. So, I mean, you can get some super cool. cheap. I see people selling them for, like, 20 bucks. Like, super, it's, so you can get cool little tanks for super-duper cheap. And then same thing, like, the LED I put on it was, like, a little strip LED I bought off 20 bucks for somebody. So I'm into the tank for, like, $30 with a light. I see go turn into a rock flower tank. Currently, it's for Dude, Burgess, awesome. but... Yeah, so, so I think can... light. I think like light wise, like these save the LEDs. Most of them, uh, good, right? Yeah. It's not back in the days we were using like PC uh, power compact. I'm like struggling. It's like, okay, I need to see. I need to get like four, three or four watts per gallon. It's, it's no longer that game. Yeah. So nowadays LED, we're a lot more forgiving and price have come down. Exactly. So I think in terms of like budget reefing, it's uh, a lot more doable now. Hundred percent. Hundred percent is. The only one thing, if you're trying to go budget reefing on a big tank, you got to make sure if you're going for Acropora, make sure you have enough juice to kind of 
penetrate downwards. That's like the only one kind of big thing is you don't want to go too cheap on something that doesn't have the penetration. Really good point. Yeah. So let's talk about that really quick as well. Let's say a tank that's a little bit larger. Twenty mm -hmm. is twenty inches height a little bit too aggressive in terms of a budget reeving? Mm -hmm. Could you recommend a light? Well, I yeah, guess it's all probably. relative, right? It's all relative. Depends on the depth. Yeah. What would you What would you go with? I'm not the most up to date in terms of like light these days. So no, that's let's fair. see. Okay, so lots of people are still diehards with T5s and they work. A bunch of bulbs. The only downfall you can probably get used ones cheap. The only downside is you have the ongoing bulb expense. Um, as for the light fixture, now actually one the what's Logan's one reef breeders. Those ones are actually pretty good bang for your buck for like the penetration everything in the fixture. Um, so nice. those ones are a pretty solid option. Uh, again, the Noob Sykes would be a good budget option as well. Those are probably the two I'd like that. Or whatever you find used for like a, a good, like a higher end brand one's another one, right? Every time a new generation comes yeah. out of lights, people upgrade. You can always find smoking deals on stuff. You just got to time it Absolutely. with the uh, new gens. Jeremy mentioned Viper Spectra. Is that the black box? I'm not 100%. I have no idea on that one. Is a brand for, oh, well, I guess we'll find out. If you yeah. guys know any comment, let us know. Yep, let us know what's up. Um, now, okay, so we're talking about corals. That was one of the questions that came by a few minutes ago. Budget corals. Yep. What's what's nice and pretty and cheap? You asking me? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what corals nice, ha nice, uh, pretty and cheap? Yep. A lot. Uh, zoas, mushrooms, mm -hmm. uh, softies. I'm a big fan of softies these days. Mm -hmm. LPS. Where do you want me to start? I can give you anywhere, a whole bunch anywhere. of names. Just give me a category. We'll go in. Okay. Um, LPS is easy. You can get yep. them pretty inexpensive. They're yes. pretty easy. Give you lots of flow in the tank. What's yep. your What's your favorite? What's your favorite LPS? Frostbind, and I'll yep. say probably the purple tip green if I have yep. a choice. choice. Otherwise, the green tip is okay as well. Mm -hmm. uh, hammer is nice. I do like wall hammer. I just kind of like that shape, but then it's yep. also risky, right? Like mm -hmm. if you kind of <laughs> nicked it or like look at it badly, the whole thing just goes. There's no way to break <laughs> off a branch like a branching hammer. Uh, torches, I have not had too much long-term luck with. Okay. I used to have, uh, I think like two or three frags of like gold torch, some from Australia, some from Indos, cool. and yeah. uh, within, within a year, they just kind of like, did not really? go, did, they just did not do well. Okay. But back then, I was also having a lot of uh, alkalinity fluctuation as well. Mm. Terrible reefer. That so that may account for it. Yeah. Now, but yeah, LPS. I, I wouldn't call torches budget because they seem to be in this bubble of craze and obsession and they're all overly priced. But yeah. I do love my, like, I find my big tank, my eyes are drawn to the torch garden constantly because it's this big whole flowy thing in like the third of a tank, which I love. So I do love torches. Yep. Can I go with that? Yep. How about Akens? I, I love also love acans, not the cheapest though. At least for me, if you're in Australia, they're like free. Here, they're not. <laughs> in Canada, at least the fancy ones aren't the cheapest. But I hear you. Yep. Now let me let me ask you then. How about letter? Do you have any particular favorite letters? Green. Or are you more like a stickhead and? Nope, I have two. <laughs> I have a. All right, let's see. Like I think they're like the, I think it's a Japanese toadstool. The ones with like the bright green polyps. I yeah. have one of those in my tank, and then I have a chunk of that like green nephia, I think it's called. It's kind of like a Kenya tree, but like super vibrant green. Nice. Yeah. Oh, I think I know which one you're talking about. I think. Yeah. I think. I think it's called I'm green happy. nephia. Yeah. yeah, I've tried to like recently. I have this whole thing about like, okay, how do you determine between a nephia versus a single nerves and stuff like that? And maybe it's singular. <laughs> I don't. They're yeah. they're both yeah, very my, similar. Um, no, no, it's just like one of my friends was like, yeah, I can, I can show you, but it's like a whole paper you have to be <laughs> like, yeah. oh, no, no, i just ask you next time. Yeah, but uh, a lot of them is like really similar, at least to mm -hmm. me. But the Japanese le Japanese letter, Japanese toadstool with the green yep. polyps, I think I know which one you're talking about. That's that's one of my favorite as well. Nice. And choice. recently I got the um, Japanese Nethias. It's mm -hmm. the pink, uh, is it Kojiwata? Mm -hmm. Pink. Pink no, letter. No idea it is, but I think I know what you're talking about. It's really cool. It's kind of like a uh, pink nephew, but then it has like really interesting like white texture. I think it's like, it starts with C. I can't pronounce all these words. But it's really mm. interesting. I'll send you some photos later. Yeah. Okay. Sounds really good. Uh, also, the, the whipping willow is also one of my favorite letter. Oh, those are nice. They're kind of almost like a torturous looking one. Totally. There seems to be like two different types. One has like green polyp with the yep. polyp a little bit shorter, but the regular types has a longer polyp. That's the one that I'm, yeah. I think like is awesome. Those look very cool. One reefer, thank you for the 99 cent super chat. Uh, thank Dan, you. Dan, 
You used to have a pulsing singulera. Very cool. Oh, I used a, to have that too. A pulsing one? Yeah. It's it's really small. It's like the, the palms are really small. It's almost hair like, and it's yeah. really so. It's like, and it's spiral up, spiral. Yeah, mm-hmm. but it's uh, it's it's not as crazy as like pulsing xenia, so which cool. I love as well. By the way, I know I know a lot of people hate it. I, if you want a super easy tank, I saw a tank one time. Talk about like easy budget. It was a tank by, on someone's desk by the window, natural sunlight, nothing else, full of a xenia. and the whole tank was just like moving in the sun. It actually looked really pretty, and it's like the easiest tank ever. Like that's probably as budget as you can get. And it looked awesome. So I was like, huh, this is a good idea. You know, funny you mentioned it because like when I was going to college, there's like a local fish store around me has the exact same setup. Mm-hmm. Uh, bio cube, small one, just full of Xenia, like yeah. World War Xenia. And I think they have a um, blue stripe, Af- Af- African blue stripe pipe dish in there. And that's it. Yeah. And it's, uh, it's, it's the most amazing thing. Mm-hmm. So there's something, there's something about it. And I see that somebody mentioned like Green Stop Polyp as well. Hey, I love Green Stop Polyp as well. I have some in all my tanks. Actually, not my, not my water box, but even this one. Like, it's the color, it's so easy. It's just, it's bright, it's vibrant. Just don't put on your main rock structure. Leave it as an yeah. island on the sand, and it's just bright flow. Everyone loves it. Easy to peel off as well once they crawl mm-hmm. in a window uh, or the glass. Like, yeah. if people want to frag, just whoosh, whoosh. Done. Easy. Easy peasy. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Mike Horan, question below. Listening while driving. <laughs> Thanks for the two dollars super chat. I do not see your question, though, unless it's coming still. Oh, let's uh, take a look. Yeah. Yep. Uh, how, how about Zoas? Zoas? There's so many different types out there. Do you have any favorites? Zoas are amazing. Um, what are my favorites? Looking beside me. Utter Chaos is one because those always stand out. And they grow really well in my tank. So those are those treat me well. Um, I like like the Hornets. All those type of ones are always fun. Those are cool. Yep. Yeah. What's your favorites? So. <sighs> I'm not trying to copy you, but Utter Chaos is probably one of them. Uh, I think the Sunny Ds, yeah. they always seem to yeah. do well and colorful, mm-hmm. sometimes yellow, sometimes green, depending on the situation, and they all seems, always seem to get a little uh, poofy. Yeah. Uh, I also like the Magician. I think Magician is one those of those cool. that you got to appreciate up close, right? You see that yeah. little details, little sparkles and greens. Mm-hmm. Um, I think like my tank is getting to that point where I can start planning that Zoa Garden, so I'm now kind of like taking a look and see what's out there. And there's some crazy names out there, let me tell you. <laughs> There People is. are really creative coming up with those names. I'm pretty sure they're just like sitting around having a drink and be like, what's the most bizarre thing I come up with? Ah, that's the new Zoa. But you know what? I mean, it works. Yeah. Because like when I see a Zoa that calls like a uh, super cyan, mm-hmm. I'm like, dude, I have to get it. <laughs> I know. <laughs> you know? It's, it's, it's true. Something about it. <laughs> Zoas have mm-hmm. the worst names. Yep. They, they, they're so random. Okay, refram page. Tell Moki I say hi, and should I get AI Hydra or Prime for my 30 long? Hello, refram page. <laughs> All right, Dev, I'm going to um, let you answer that question because I feel like you're more in touch with light than me. I What's a 30 long? Is that a three-foot tank? I don't know how long a 30 long is. Let me look. I am terrible with normal tank sizes. Like, when people tell me them, I, I have no idea because I always buy weird tanks and, like, rimless ones like i never buy normal tanks so it's always <laughs> like this guy all custom huh I, I always like i always even like the fluval edges and innovative marine like i always pick weird tanks i just never buy normal tanks now if it's like a 30 gallon breeder it's 36 inches three okay. foot yeah by 18 by 12 so it's okay. pretty shallow yeah so super assuming sh- it's a breeder super shallow okay you might if you raise it high enough the one ai hydra i think you said could probably work i've never used the hydra personally but I, they're rectangular design, so if it's high enough up, it'd probably work. And it's a shallow tank, so you could probably get away with that. If it was two primes, I would probably use two primes if I had just normal lights above it. So those are the, the two options, depending on which one works out better price-wise and aesthetically for you. Hey, Fang is here too. It's like, I like the Stratosphere Zoas. I remember that name. Isn't it like hundreds of dollars per polyp? <laughs> Sounds budget. <laughs> yeah, exp- expensive taste. All right, I'm Google Imaging these guys. Oh, those are pretty. Um, okay, one thing we did not touch on in terms of like budget reef tanks so far is like water currents. Like, what do you use to push your water? We talked about lights, right? Yep, hundred percent. Okay. Um, so cheapest power heads are probably going to be your good old Jabos, which is what yep. I started with, and I'm sure most people did because they're cheap. It's hard not to. Um, I've had hit or miss reliability for me. So on a big okay, Nick just said gyre on a bigger tank. I would agree a gyre is probably your best bang for your buck. 
um, because it moves a lot of water, especially if you use it as a true dryer and get that momentum building up. And that's going to give you lots of movement. Now, the only downfall to gyres is you tend to have to clean them more often, so they're a little more work and maintenance. But for flow for your dollar, they're pretty good. Um, J-Bows for normal size tanks, I find they're cheap and they work well. But I find it's mess. I've had some that have been awesome, and I have some that have bit the dust or worn out or broke or made weird sounds and stuff. So they've been Russian roulette. Uh, j return pumps have been pretty solid overall in my experience. Yes. So that's a cheap return pump. j is a good way to go. Yep. And I Total use, review. Yep. I think I have the DCT. Uh, I still have it as a backup just in case. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay, well, let's, let's continue playing that game Yeah. where we are building your dream kind of budget reef tank, which is like a 15 gallon. I feel like it's kind of like a nice size, small size. size. What would you pick for your power head? For 15 gallon? What would I pick or what would budget me pick? What would budget you pick? That's a good question. Because actually Dan, uh, Dan has a good point here. Is like, he want to ask like, what would we actually use first? <laughs> no, <laughs> we didn't have a lot of sponsorship and free gear. Fair question, fair question. Okay. If I wasn't super budgety, I would probably use an AI Nero because I really like what that can do for its size. Um, super budget me would probably go for just a little j pump, knowing that we'll eventually die and I'll have to replace it eventually. But if I decide to splurge a bit more, I'd probably go for a Nero. And they have a little baby Nero coming out soon, the Nero 3. So I oh, probably... Oh, is that coming out? Okay. I don't know. It's been coming out for a while, so hopefully it's coming out soon. I think the whole pandemic cool. slowed it all down. But but if, th- if that was a good price, I'd use that. And if it was expensive to me, then I would probably use the j do you remember so, how much a Jabo is? Was it like forty or fifty or something like that yeah, in that range? Yeah, they're pretty cheap. Okay. Um, uh, so a couple cool. of people are saying high door. Actually, what yeah, we're... I think like for, yeah, you know, like for me, I was about to mention high door as well because mm-hmm. I actually have the high door power head. It's um, yep. it's not the smallest, but it mm-hmm. push a decent amount of water, but not so strong that it's gonna blow things away hey, in a small tank. Budget. I bought my original one for twenty or thirty bucks for the Nano one. That's what I used to have back in my Fubo twelve gallon. Did the job. Nice. <laughs> David L. And two MP tens and an eighteen gallon. Yeah, that's not budget. <laughs> oh jeez. <laughs> Speaking of MPs, right? I have a separate question. This totally yeah. has nothing to do with uh, oh, like. Uh, can I just kind of hop in here? I'm sorry, guys. Mm-hmm. I'm like sidetracking this. Ask away. Okay. So I have two MP forties, right? Right now yes. it's pointing to each other. Yep. Should I do that or should I put them on the same size? It's your tank. Run. Two foot by four it, foot. What's my your tank? Foot wide. It's uh thirty inches wide. Okay. Front to back. No wide. Front to back, front to back, thirty. Uh, okay. Width wise, it's four foot, forty-eight. If I was you, I would honestly probably put them on the back wall so you don't see them and let them push forward. Oh, I did not think about that. Back to front is less distance to the side, so you'll get a lot more momentum in that, and then you'll yeah. you won't even see them because they'll blend in with your back background. That's what I would do if I had your tank. Okay, that's actually uh, I've not, never thought about that. Thank you. Welcome. The reason I brought this up is because, like, recently I watched a live stream that uh, Mr. Jake Adams did about, mm-hmm. like, water water current, how fast it should be hitting before hitting corals to create that chaotic flow, blah, blah, blah. It's a whole thing. It's yeah. a whole thing. Uh, that so that got me thinking to kind of focus a little bit more on, um, mm-hmm. like, water current inside a reef tank. Yep. Anyways, random thing because somebody mentioned uh, the <laughs> MP tents. Let's get back to budget reefing. Okay. Oh, so just completely other random one. So I, sure. I've also had like a little five gallon bow front, which again, I got from free for somebody for a little budget reef. And I had like the tiniest little hob filter on it ever. And that's all I had on it for flow. So I didn't have power heads. It just basically had like a super tiny hang on the back filter. And that dropped in that little waterfall and made the flow in the tank. And I had a few little nano fish in it and a few corals and super, super cheap in budget. That totally works. Um, in the past, when I had my old, old 10 gallon, mm-hmm. even my uh, 30 gallon, it's basically powered by a hang on the back power filter. Yep. Um, for the 30 gallon on top of the filter, I also have a, um, I think it's called red, it's the red sea s- prism skimmer, hang on the back skimmer. Okay. So yep. I have those pushing water and that's it. It's not even a power head. So one of those guys definitely work. What kind of nano fish did you keep in the tank in a five gallon? I'm really curious. What were they called? They're like pygmy Little, like, little Don't say anything gobies. if it's going to incriminate yourself. No, no, no. Tang, right? it, no, it was like pygmy gobies. They were like these super tiny little fish. They're super cool. Oh, how are your little like rasbora looking guys doing? Whatever they're called. The saltwater ones. Uh, the, the, I got to think about it every time I mention the name. Blue back. No, sorry. Yeah, blue back, blue eye, dwarf rainbow fish. Yeah. They're okay. I mean, I had like a, I have like a, they just kind of start dying off, mostly the male. The first two weeks, and then now it stabilized at seven. I started with twelve. Mm-hmm. Uh, after I think I think it's about three months, four months point. Now I got seven, and they seems to be doing well. 
Uh, initially, I think like maybe the flow, the, I think it's like the second or third night, the flow from the MP10 is a little bit too rough. I feel like I may have uh, murdered a couple of fish in there. It's terrible. Oh, so yeah. I immediately put on the foam guard and that kind of helped. And then the following week, I lost one or two. And then it's been holding steady since. So knock on wood yep. that they'll be okay. Nice. Yeah, That's but good. really cool little fish, something different. Mm -hmm. Really makes the tank a lot bigger than uh, what it appears to be. Mm -hmm. And I think like selecting fish for nano tank, it's, it's, it's interesting. It's not something that, it seems like in terms of selection, everybody go with like, oh, maybe damn so clam fish. But uh, it's really interesting when some people can find like certain different ones, like your pick me gobies, mm -hmm. right? Or sometimes like leaf, small leaf fish, like yeah. this kind of interesting little fish that go in there. That'd be cool. They're more fun. And personally, I like finding t smaller fish, like to give the tank more scale. Like I'd rather have a yes. bunch of tiny fish rather than a couple big fish. That's my, my personal corals. Purpose. At one point, I tried to find like small polyp corals just so that the whole tank looks a little bit bigger versus yeah. like a big chunk, chunky ones. Mm -hmm. No, yeah, that's a good way to do it. Um, now, but the other thing is now with polyps, for instance, like zoas, if they're in low light, in low flow, they're going to be bigger, stretchier polyps. Or if they're in higher light and higher flow, they're going to stay smaller and more condensed. So some of your equipment choices are going to affect how your corals are going to grow. That's a really good point. That's one thing I noticed with the Aqua Knight in my budget, uh, budget nano tank uh, mm -hmm. back then. Aqua Knight, I was pretty much in, maxed out in terms of the spectrum I want. I'm not pushing the white all the way because I want still want a little blue glows. Yeah. Uh, so I noticed that the Zoas definitely is not as vibrant as when it was in the 45 uh, 45 gallon tank. Mm -hmm. Not saying that it looks bad, but it just looks a little bit different. Yeah. Um, reach a little bit, not to the point where I think that that's not enough light. But what you say is definitely true. I feel like if you can push the light a little bit more, right, by like putting something else on, a different type of light, or hang a little bit lower, it may benefit certain corals. No, nope, definitely will. So it'd be good. It's all these little tweaks, eh? Okay. Yeah, totally. So how about heaters? Heaters. That's the that's another big one hmm. for like a budget tank. Okay. Now, if you're super budget, I mean any heater really, but I tend to go for the Jaggers is like my general cheap go to because they're like 20, 30 bucks and they've been reliable for me. Um, now, with a heater, the one thing you should buy for your heater is a heater controller because if you're going to be in this long term, they're going to die eventually. Like, usually what happens is the thermostat gets stuck on. Now, yeah. so yeah, a couple people already said Inkbird, which Inkbird is a solid choice. I have one on the tank beside me. I got to cut the BRS version, which is very similar to like a new sticker, slightly tweaked, but very similar heater controllers. So I do think those are a good idea. I know some of the Phoenix holders, Phoenix heaters come with a heater controller too. Yes. Um, another heater that I do like for a nano tank, if I'm not using a heater controller, I don't know why, I feel like it's slightly safer, but the Neotherm heater, so those little thin black ones. And they have mm. a digital thermostat outside of them. So I feel like that's a lot more reliable than that little piece of metal that flicks back and forth that can eventually bugger up inside of the other ones. So they're, they're not as budget. I mean, they're like 50, 60 bucks instead of like 20 or 30 bucks. But I feel they've been solid and they're pretty darn stable when I tested them out for monitoring the temps and all that jazz with them. So they're a good option for a tiny tank. Yeah, I... The new firm, I'm kind of like torn because I know uh, the one my buddy got, uh, Mighty Nano Tank, kind of... Yeah. I don't want to say blow up. Yeah, no, <laughs> they, just kinda, they did. There yeah, was just like something happened and then people started chiming in. So I'm like, oh, I don't know. There was one model that had some issues and some of them cracked and then caused some issues. So, um, yeah, I haven't heard of that in a long time. But so I never used that 200 watt model, whatever that one was. But I've had a couple yeah. of them and they've been solid. Yeah. Otherwise, uh, the e -Hive, definitely a uh, big fan mm -hmm. of that one as well. Um, these days I got converted to titanium. Mm -hmm. Thanks to... Uh, Mr. Jim, he had been yep. making me do a lot of things, but uh, I think it's a good move. We got like a separate heated controller, like you mentioned, and I do have to ink bird. I just have to hook it up. It's been sitting on the shelf. You get that on the tank. Terrible. Terrible. Yeah. <laughs> Rogue aquariums do four MP60s count as budget. <laughs> like oh, the my most goodness. expensive hour head that there is. Oh, I was just laughing. I cut myself off at two of those. <laughs> so, all right. You better hook it up. There you go. Telegram's piping in. It's already giving you heck. Get that baby hooked up. Oh, okay. there we go. Yeah. Hello. So if you're going to buy nothing else for like automation, buy a heater controller and an auto top off. Like those are the two things I would spend money on for sure. Yeah. You know, Adam Moore actually, 
pointed out a good point. Like the 300 watt um, behind Jagger is like three foot long. They're, those are some long glass heaters. They are. They really are. Uh, WAN titanium are nice. I've not heard of. I've, I've tried that. I've really tried good? that. It works. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. So if you have a tiny sump, that can definitely be an issue with the Jaggers. Um, yeah. The uh, quick question: the yes. BLS titanium heaters. Um, yeah. They look really similar to the Inkbird, but did not the same, right? Controller. Like they tweaked a little bit. The controller. the controller itself. The controller unit. Yes, slightly tweaked. Okay. They have one feature <laughs> they have that the Inkbird doesn't is they have a, re- a replaceable temperature probe, which is kind of nice. Um, they do have that. Was there anything else? I don't know. There might be. I have it in my tank. was hiding behind my controller board, so I don't actually see it very often. It's kind of like set it and forget. Same with the Inkbird. It's like on the back of the stand. Like they're all hidden. They're just okay. there. It's like a backup plan. Okay. Uh, are you using a carbon... Are you carbon dosing? I am not. I have not carbon dosed in quite a while. I'm using a carbon doser for the calcium reactor, but I'm not carbon dosing. Okay. Supplementation. How are you going to... Okay. So if you oh, have... Nice segue. Yeah. That's a good segue. So if you are supplementing corals for a big tank, or any yeah. tank, rather, budget tank, um, for, oh, yeah, first of all, depends on the type of corals. If you have zoas and softies, like mushrooms, you don't even probably need to dose. You know, you just do your water right. change, you're probably good. If you're trying to be fancy and get some acros and some encrusting or monty, or any of these types of corals are going to suck out nutrients out of your tank, then you're going to start considering dosing at a certain point. I mean, if it's... Yep. A five-gallon tank, maybe it's 100% water change every week, and it's not an issue, right? But if you go into, like, a 40-, 50-gallon tank where it's not feasible to do massive water changes on a frequent basis, then I would start considering to do dosing. Anything more than 20 gallons, I'm going to say. Let's talk budget dosing. Yeah, we are. (laughs) (laughs) So I've uh, I've used the the, J-Bow, the four channel ones. Works fine. I mean, kind of a pain to program, but once you program it, yeah. you just don't touch it, it's fine. Yeah. Well, totally reliable, at least for me so far. Well, not at the moment, but like for the year and a half, two years I was using it. Yep. Uh, in terms of dosing solution, I was using the BLS two parts. Yep. Um, but I do feel like certain trace elements were kind of missing. Like I do I do see that my core seems to perk up a little bit once I do something else. Mm-hmm. But I think in terms of like budget dosing for me, at least uh, in my past, that, that would be the way to go for me. Like yep. J-Bowls and then like a BLS two parts. How about you? Okay. Um, you can beat the j doser for the price. For under 100 bucks for forehead doser, it has been solid. 100% agree. Pain in the butt to program it. Um, they do have a newer Wi-Fi one. I haven't used it, but the old one, you got to push the button like 8,000 times a day. Yes. And I would break out my dosing to every hour, so then I'd have to go modify like a ton of... <laughs> oh, so it, it takes me like hours to freaking adjust it. And you're like, okay, I'll, every hour I'll add one mil. And... So it's a bit of a pain, but it's hard to beat for the price. Um... <laughs> Say no... Bunch of reefing's name is spelled J Bao. <laughs> nice. Yeah. It will. Okay, so that one is hard to beat. And then, then from there, I mean, you can go to Coral Box, which I'm pretty sure is just fancy J Bao. It's like their fancy REM. And then you can go up to all the other ones from there. Um, the Coral Box, I'm using, uh, well, I use their single channel doser and the four channels. I, I have used the apps. They are surprisingly good, uh, yeah. I have to say. I mean, like, the app is not the prettiest. Which one? But then uh, for both the, so, the, both the single channel and also yep. the four channels, they have they use the same apps. Yeah, and I'm not sure if it's Wi-Fi or Bluetooth, uh, but I can like it's connected pretty easily and it seems reliable. Mm-hmm. I'm still using a single channel right now nice. on the mangrove tank. Oh, perfect. Yeah, so yeah, so there's something to be said about the convenience of like just pulling up your phone and sh- 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 do that. Oh, I I love the automation. Like I'm I'm all about the easy to do type of things it, it's nice to have especially if you're like hidden in a stand you have to crawl in there you just pull open your phone you're like yep yeah, this much and yeah the crowbock okay. one works pretty well uh dan was asking about cage director i do not have a cage director so no i have not set it up because i don't have one but i do have the alcatronic which i have actually have two of them so i have one on my main tank and then i bought a used one and fixed it and now it's on my other tank so i'm up to two of them nice. so I, i'm a fan of those they work well for me yep same and you can put the reagent back into your tank, which is nice, which I reluctantly like went against it for like a year and a half. And then I eventually caved and started doing it. And it's so much nicer not to deal with waste containers. Mm. Do you put yours back in? Your I tank? put mine back in as well. Yeah. I mean, I've been like following the Facebook group uh, like a couple months before I even got it because I want to yeah. make sure that I am getting something that I actually want to use. Mm-hmm. So I was like, okay, this looks good. I'll yeah. do it. Um, I would say really changed the way I approach reefing. Like the... 
the ability to see the elk like every couple hours is just mm -hmm. game changer for me no. for somebody who does not test that often yeah it's the biggest one like even my big tank i have it just testing every like 12 hours and i basically just use it to know when i need to tweak my calcium reactor every once in a while like oh my elk's slowly dribbling down a little bit just walk up do glug yeah. Back. Uh, good again <laughs> yep so all right it's um Budget okay. reefing. <laughs> budget reefing. This is not budget. Um, although, the guy that won the Algatronic that I gave away a couple weeks ago in the contest is setting up like a smaller, like two by two tank. So he's totally got this pimped out little budget tank. It's going to be awesome. Nice. Yeah, stoked for that. Uh, that's what, 60, 60 gallon cube? I don't know. 24 by 24? 40 to 60 range, somewhere in there. Okay, 45 would be uh, by 18 height. That's yeah. cool. Yeah. I so, like cube tanks. Yeah, they're cool. Yeah, tell did I tell you my ideal tank size is going to be like a, probably like a 93 gallon cube? I know that's what uh, Jim mm -hmm. is looking for as well. But that's, yeah. I feel like it's uh, not quite triple digit where it's going to be a pain in the butt, mm -hmm. but uh, it's still manageable and it's a good size, good depth, good width, height. Nope, it's a good way to do it. The depth gives you a lot of cool stuff to work with. Okay. Yeah. So, so we talked, okay, now what to do? So we talked about pumps to get in the tank. Okay. Yeah. E easiest one, hands down for starters, is probably going to be Kelk because if you have an auto top off, you can just put in a scoop of it to your auto top off. I think it's like one or two, is it teaspoons or tablespoons? I never remember. Um, per gallon, roughly. But you can start with a little bit less and you can slowly up as you go. That's the easy one. Now, the only downfall to Kelk is it's harder on your pump, so you're going to have to give it that vinegar bath or citric acid bath a little more frequently and clean it just to make sure it doesn't build up on it long term. Yeah, so one teaspoon per gallon. All right, so that's super easy way. Uh, next super budget way is baking soda. Or, yeah, like Arm & Hammer baking soda, super easy. You can use that to dose your tank. You can use it to raise it, pick that up from a grocery store. Um, now, the super, super duper cheap way is I had a buddy that worked up north, and he got me, like, five-gallon buckets of, like, industrial calcium chloride oh, and sodium carbonate, basically, like, for free. So I had these, like, lifetime supplies in my shed. So if I ever need it, it's, like, my backup stuff. It's probably not as pure, not as good, but I use it for years issue-free. So Yeah, I'm, I kind of have questions about those as well. Yeah. Um, I know right now, like pharmaceutical grades or just like super pure stuff is like mm -hmm. kind of like the thing, right? A yeah. lot of people say that that's why their product is special. Mm -hmm. Is there really that big of a difference? Okay. So here, here's my theory on the, on, on the budget dosing versus the pharmaceutical fancier grade. There, okay. So I know like my calcium chloride is 94% calcium chloride. What's the other 6%? Not a clue. Um, did it cause an issue in my tank? Nope. Now, I also did water changes. If you don't do water changes, I think maybe given a year down the road, the, all those little bits of random unknown stuff could add up and be an issue like a year or two down the road. However, if you do water changes, you're diluting whatever the unknown is, and it's not going to really build up to be an issue. So I think it depends on that. If you're mm. exporting it or if it's all sitting in there and all these teeny little bits are slowly just upping and upping and upping long term. That's so. a good point. Yeah, that, that's my thoughts. What do you think? Good point. I agree. Yeah. I'm with you. <laughs> okay. Although I am probably, the, uh, although for me, right, <laughs> if given a choice, I know like one thing is pharmaceutical, one mm -hmm. thing is like just regular, like, or yeah. uh, things that's not built for the hobby, I guess. Mm -hmm. I'll put it that way. If the dollar amount is not that big of a difference, I would go with the pharmaceutical one just yeah. to be safe because I don't know. Like, so, I'm not like you. You kind of know like all the details. Well, I don't. It, well, so I was like, it's like fear sales, I guess. Again, okay, is this gallon going to cost me $5 or $7? Or is it $5 or $10? You know, like a dollar or two, you're probably like, yeah, sure. But if it's like double the price, you're like, I don't know about that, right? Yeah. So I think so. I find most people pick the middle, right? They're like, here's too cheap, here's too expensive. They're in the middle. Like I know a lot of stuff's like market like that because a lot of people default to pick the middle. <laughs> nice. Good point. All right. Um, I know we're talking about like budget reefing and stuff like yeah. that, but one of the most imp uh, most expensive part of the hobby, yes. probably the livestock yeah. corals. What's your what's your favorite well favorite tips in terms of like getting uh, more affordable corals? Make friends with local local reefers. Um, yes. And, tra and trade stuff. Usually, if you know someone local with a big tank and they're pruning their tank, a lot of times they'll just give it to you or sell it super duper cheap. So it's a good way to do. It. Um, now, when you first start out, it's a little bit harder to get that initial batch. But once you do, you can trade corals, which is like the gravy train, right? Like once you got enough corals, you're like, oh, hey, I'll trade you for a chunk of that. And then you just, you don't pay anything, right? You just keep trading and yeah. trading and trading. But it, it takes a little bit to get your initial stuff to work with from there. Totally, totally, totally yeah. agree with you. 
Um, yeah, I think like I used to do forums as well before I have like a local network of friends. I do forums, local reef club, fantastic um, resource, I think. Uh, I've done Craigslist one, one or two times. Yeah, how'd that work uh, out eBay and stuff like that weren't around back. Well, not 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 uh, not around, but I was like mm-hmm. not as familiar with it, so I didn't really use it back then. But I think like a lot of people do it that route as well. Yeah, I think so. I've have never... you tried buying off like forums and stuff like that? Nope. <laughs> or just mostly local for you? F- Facebook groups to see someone post something, uh, mainly local. But yeah. I, I bought some off, like, I didn't know the person other than, like, seeing them post something, right, in a group. That, that's what that's the most of online. I've, when I first started reefing, I ordered some stuff online, and it looked like nothing, like, the picture, and I was so mad. So it kind of, like, tainted oh, no. me about it for a while. So then I was, like, only in person for the longest time. So I can, like, go and check it out and see it and then see if it's good. Yeah, it's kind of tough now, though, right? I mean, like, you can't really, like, see the corals open in their own, uh, own tank. You just got to trust that person. Yeah, hopefully they have good photos and they're reliable. But yeah, the, one of my, my first like expensive Zoe I bought was like a hundred bucks for a few polyps. Oh my goodness! And it, what is it called? What's the name? I don't know if it's like Armor of God or something. It's one of those, but it was okay. like it wasn't nearly as vibrant as the picture. And I was so mad. I'm like, I would have not have paid a hundred bucks for that. And I was like, and it, <laughs> it was like a mail order one, right? Like I got on an order uh, or something, so I couldn't even like do anything about it. It's just like ah, so I was torn. I was scarred. Still, still recovering from that. I mean, it's a, it's a nice Zoa. It's a pretty Zoa. So yeah. Hopefully they go well for you. But then I bought some at a, one of the shows I went to, and they're like 30, 40 bucks I paid at the show, and they're like way more vibrant than those like ghetto ones that I bought. So, um, But yeah, trade shows, unfortunately, not a thing. Not, not at the moment, but when shows are going, you can get some wicked yeah. deals. And if you're at a show and you hold out till the last day, there's going to be less selection, but you're going to get like way better prices. Because a lot of times people are like, I don't want to carry all this stuff home. So they'll like sell stuff really cheap so they have less stuff to pack up and log home. So if you do go to aquarium shows or reef shows, reef blueses, any of those, if you go Sunday is like the good deal day for corals. Go both days, right? Yeah. All three days. Go like Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Exactly. And But it, you know, one thing. Yeah. Sorry, go ahead. No, no. I was going to say, it's same thing with equipment too. I have got some wicked deals on equipment because I got the display models, again, from a show, right? The company's less stuff than a long home. Like I've got a lot of lot of sweet gear from like wicked deals because it was like a display model. I'm like, I'll take it. How much? Okay, one quick thing just first. Mike Hornan, yep. thank you for the super chat. Upgrading two AAO ten gallon nanos that serve as a quarantine to a twenty gallon. Anything I can do to ensure a successful transition since I have almost no live rock. Do's and don'ts. Um, okay. So technically whatever live rock or media is in there is already ho- established and carrying the load for whatever inhabitants are in there so in theory it'll be fine in your new tank now personally i would probably buy some like little bright well and marine pure cubes or balls or whatever get some kind of a medium and throw in the back of the tank for a few weeks and let that establish because that's going to make up for your lack of live rock then once you have all that life on there moving that to your tank is going to help move a lot more kind of biofiltration over so that's one option. Uh, and Nick just commented bottle bacteria, pond matrix. Yeah, so similar thing. Have that media and a bit of bottle bacteria is going to help boost it in the new tank. So definitely with that one. Yeah, I'm still slowly getting into the whole bottle bacteria. I know Dude, I'm like super late. Down. But <laughs> I'm the guy that like have a tank just with water and rock running, throw some like liquid ammonia in there and just wait. Well, I, uh, I did that too, but after I had the bacteria, so it cycled in like a week or two instead of like a month or two. But you're also talking to a guy that leaves the light on during cycle. Algae magnet. There you go. <laughs> so I'm happy when I see like brown dire times. Like, yes, green algae. Yes. Long hair algae. We're done. <laughs> test, test, test. Man, come on. Budget, budget reefing, right? I don't have the money to buy uh, test kits. But Just if you buy at, like... Uh, look at the algae. Okay, if you're patient, super duper budget, yep. you could let it cycle yep, naturally yep. over a month or two. Or if you totally. want to spend like 15, 20 bucks and get a cycle in a week or two. So it depends on your patience level. I, uh, find, I will try that next time. I'll try okay. that next time. I find Just... most people are impatient and they add fish sooner than they should, which is why I always tell people to go the bacteria route because it's like a big safety net. Mm. I'll try that next time. Okay. Because like, at this point, I still haven't like get to the point. So I'm like, ah. Although this time I did also dump in bacteria. You did, I saw I did it. also try some, I Can't did, hide it. Uh, I did do it, but I also still waited like a couple months. So mm-hmm. there's that. Yeah, that's fair. Okay. So yeah, okay, leave your lights off while cycling. Um, <laughs> Inappropriate. 
Yeah, that's, that's you. That's you. What we're can I say? About here. Um, okay, so if your lights hey, are but, on. Uh, real quick. Yes. Yeah, real quick, going back to uh, Thracia. Yes. Like when you mentioned that like, the old like, equipment's on the last mm-hmm. day of the show, I just chuckled because I remember at. It was it was either Mac I think it's Magna at uh, Vegas or something like. That. I remember last day I was saying bye to Devin, but he was so busy because like he has like a stack of equipment, a bunch of boxes. I was like, dude, what do you have there? He's like, lots of goodies. I was like, okay. So he walks the walk. You. This is where like half my gear comes from. I'm lacking new gear because I went to trade shows. You get wicked deals at the end because they don't want to haul all that stuff back, and they will often sell it for pretty sweet discounts. So just throwing that out there. Pro tips: if you go to the shows, Secret go both days. Out. You know, it's good. Um, and I want to touch on like trade show corals and stuff like that real quick as well because I yep. feel like I find a lot of fantastic deals mm-hmm. uh, at the smaller swaps actually. Mm-hmm. Smaller swaps, not the big ones. Big ones, I see some amazing stuff, but typically the price is kind of like regular because they bring the best stuff and then they, they got to pay for the space too. The yeah. booth is expensive. Like they, they pay good money to be there. So mm-hmm. they have to kind of uh, at least break even somehow, right? Yeah. That makes sense. Uh, but for the small show, because the booth is so cheap, sometimes like 20, 30 bucks for them to set up a table there, they just, the coral is just cheap. So and you're really going for budget right? stuff. Yeah. It's because it's Local lots shows of hobbyists. Local also be a good place to look. 100%. Because you're going to get all, like, the hobbyist guys that are just selling stuff out of their frag tank or making space or making some extra cash, right? And they're a lot better to deal with, too, right? And when they have a $30 booth, they're not worried compared to, like, a $1,000 booth. So it's a lot easier to cover it. You're not as worried about making every cent off of it. Yeah. But, yeah. again, the big shows, you see some crazy, crazy stuff. You were after that rare piece, that made the place to go. So there's, like, pros and cons for it, mm-hmm. um, all the different approach. But rare is not budget friendly. <laughs> Mostly true. <laughs> yeah, no. Did exactly. I tell you about my Aptasia Bob? It's a rare Aptasia. <laughs> no. Your your big one. That was your pet. That was my pet. Yeah. No, I give him away. I'm just kidding. You gave away Bob. <laughs> I gave away Bob. Yeah, it was. Uh, I donated him to experiment. Like, uh, I think it's like a unheated tank, mm-hmm. well, unheated jar with just a. I think it's just like a air stone. Hmm. but unfortunately I don't think he made it. Uh, so, but that was, yeah, that was one of those like big projects that was uh, popular a while back, just like growing Aptasia in a jar. And it's not just within the reefing hobby, but I'm, like outside. I'm, I have an Aptasia tank I'm growing on the floor by me. <laughs> it's like a little like four or five gallon tank full of rock and egg crate. There's a tiny little filter on it, just like a little aqua clear knockoff just for filtration and a heater. That's it. And I, Are you growing it for the, um, for the bird, yeah. yeah. Nice. Yeah. So, I've had tons of eggs, but I've not seen a single baby. So I don't know. Hopefully, uh, one day, eventually, I will. Yeah, so. hopefully you have success with it because they're expensive. I looked into them. Each one is what, like twelve or fifteen dollars? Yeah, they're like twenty bucks here. Yeah, they're expensive little buggers. So and I'm, I need I need a small troop in order to make a mm-hmm. dent. So I'm like, ah, oh, yeah, we're not going that route. So they're doing a fine job of cleaning any uptage off any frags I put in there. But I've seen eggs and eggs and eggs, but no babies. So apparently, they take four to six mm-hmm. weeks. And then I think at one point I found, uh, what are they called? Like a bristle worm <laughs> stuck in there. So I think he may have oh. potentially ate some babies if they were in there. So he's been evicted, okay. and I'm hoping one day, hopefully, I'll see them. But Okay. I know. All right, good luck with those guys. Thank you. Hopefully. <laughs> but yeah, so there you go. Got an Aptasia tank. That's a super cheap, easy tank, too. It cost me nothing. That, oh, totally. I know. Um, so it's good. Uh, Corals Anonymous, 10 bucks each. There you go. That might be a cheap source. Awesome. You need some. Small yeah, that's right. not bad. Mm-hmm. Uh, do But yeah, use equipment, always easy. I find usually when people upgrade or you see people get rid of tanks and stuff, really easy. Easy way to get small or cheap, easy stuff in there. <laughs> Cladding. Always people getting out of hobby, seems like. Yeah, exactly. Uh, gla- Wait, Bob died. We don't know the status of Bob. He may or may not be. He passed away. He's gone. Sorry. All right, he did die. Yeah, he had a, he had a fun life. Yep. That guy's some of his friends, though, back there. Yeah, that's good. (laughs) He left some offspring, (laughs) his legacy. (laughs) Gift that never, uh, that that, uh, that keeps giving, right? Mm -hmm. Exactly. Another thing, okay, this is completely off topic, but one thing I kind of want to do one day just for fun is a while back I did, like, a little experiment where I, like, made a rock structure in VR, and I 3D printed it just for fun, which was really cool. Mm-hmm. And I think it'd be cool to build, like, a, a skeleton-type frame rock structure and let corals grow over top of it. So there's no actual rock, which is corals, like, in the shape of rock in the tank. Oh, that would be cool. Yeah, I kind of want to try that one day. Maybe I'll do it in a nano tank, so it's not, like, super crazy to build it, but I think it'd be fun. 
You should totally do it. Thanks, sir. One, I think, didn't we also talk about like uh, so, uh, way back? Like I was gonna do a nano tank and help me like build something, and then we're gonna keep it hollow and put like marine pure mm-hmm. block of spheres kind of material on the underside of palm matrix. Yeah, totally could. So we can do a minimum scape. Yep. And still has that uh, uh, biofiltration. Exactly. So cool. th- th- there's tons of good things, but the thing is, like, if you have a small all one, you could just put in some like the biomedia in the back chamber you don't even need rock technically right like a couple of those little sticks or a handful of those balls in a small tank is all you need like it's gonna have yeah. your bacteria there's a lot of surface area in there so, yeah speaking of back chamber uh this is kind of interesting in the past i've always done kind of like a aqua clear either aqua clear 50 or aqua clear 70 to give me some room in the back to put in like uh, biomedias or like yep. if I need to run any kind of media like can be pure, can be pure blue I could have a space for it mm-hmm. but recently I started using a uh, XP aqua sumpless ATO it's kind of mm-hmm. like a, a in tank little mm-hmm. box that kind of pulls water from the surface almost so it acts like almost like a, um, a server skimmer yeah been working really well nice I wish I have something like that in the past mm-hmm. I feel like uh, the tank just looks so much cleaner without like some a bulk in the back but at the same side at the same time the trade-off is that you you don't have that extra real estate to hold the medias because mm-hmm. like instead of like a big chunk in the back now you have like it's like tiny little bits but if the marine pure block or bright well break and stuff like that does really does like what they say they do like the amount of surface area they provide then that yep. may just be enough and that will make the whole small nano tank uh profile so much slimmer oh you totally no 100 percent would work i've seen those at the shows they look really cool so it's good to know that you have one and it's good okay i had a really good idea all of a sudden because we were talking about the 3D printing stuff. Go for it. If you had a CNC machine. Yeah, yeah. Like, this is obviously not budget. But if you had a CNC machine, and you took, like, one of those big marine pier of Brightwell bricks and CNC'd it into cool structures, you can make a crazy Uh-oh. scape out of the media. This is, like, completely oddball, but that'd be pretty sweet. You could build some crazy stuff. Can a CNC machine actually do that? Oh, I thought yeah. you just, like, straight cut and stuff like that. No, you no, can no. actually shape? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's like a little rudder bit that goes down, and it can, like, cut out shapes. How cool uh, would that be? I, I mean, I've seen those kind of material made into frack plug, but yeah. I didn't think, like, you can make out of shape with it. That's cool. Yeah, that, that could be a crazy. That, my buddy has a little desktop one. Maybe I'll, I'll experiment with it one day. But that could be pretty cool. Yeah, that would be cool. That would be awesome. Yep. Uh, marine pure bricks are really brittle. Yeah, I mean, you could probably, honestly, a marine pure brick, you could cut it with, like, a bread knife and shape it yourself. It wouldn't be as, like, fine-tuned, but it'd work. But, hmm, that's some cool stuff. I don't know, 3D printing is super useful, as I just found this on my desk. It's, like, a little dosing line holder to clip tubes into. Nice. It. It's just so useful. Again, if you have, you're in a DIY, 3D printers are wicked, because you can just, like, think of something and make it. Like, yeah. my latest little thing, I made little clips to hold all the wires along my light bar so that all the wires are hidden, so really easy. Yeah, it's like recently I started thinking of things that, oh, man, I, sometimes I, was, I wish I have a 3D printer. Uh, recently I bought actually three of those um, uh, Vortec, yeah. those uh, anemone guards, guards yep. right? I mean, I mean, it's pretty cheap on eBay. It's like 10 bucks. Mm-hmm. But if I have a 3D printer, I can probably just print it myself versus like having to wait for shipping and stuff like that. Yep. Uh, there's just a lot of little things. I was like, oh, I wish I have this and mm-hmm. maybe in the future. Yeah, it's handy. You just think of it and made it. And, I don't know. It's easy. You're like, oh, I need something for this a couple hours later you got it so it's cool yeah mm-hmm. uh what 3d printer do you use i have a tivo tarantula which is like one i bought off like aliexpress like many moons ago and i've done tons of little upgrades to it so it's no longer a tivo tarantula but it started as one but it's been pretty solid now with 3d printers because i get asked all the time what to get basically the cheaper it is, the more DIY and tweaking it takes, the more expensive it is, the more it's going to be ready to roll out of the box. Like, that's basically your deciding factor, is do you want to tinker or do you just want it to work? And how much do you want to tinker with it? So, on the budget size, 100% works, but you just got to be willing to tinker and spend those hours of tweaking to, like, dial it in and make it really good. All right. What else now, have we got? What, else, what are we missing? Did we cover everything? What else is budget? I think cover everything. I was gonna ask. Um, I was gonna ask if we have kind of um, finished with the budget reefing. This is free for all chat now. <laughs> if so, if so, I have some question for you. Ask away. Recently, I've been thinking. Yes. With the 135 gallon tank, pretty much just like uh, now, just a matter of maturing. What's my next project, right? And that makes me want to ask you as well. Yes. Do you have any special project coming up? My 
big shallow frag tanks like my next thing on my to-do list um okay. when i get revision two of it now so i've already like built the light bar and i built like half of it already so just waiting for it. i got the couch reactor sitting there now like all these parts slowly building and like my my radions from my old tank like there's in a pile everyone's waiting for this so that's my next so you have all the equipments like figured out you know what's going on there already most of it because i'm stealing it most of it's just my old equipment right like the majority of it i'm just reusing so just because it saves me money like i already have a lot of it um yeah yep and are you going to plumb it together to um your existing tank or are you going to keep it separate it will be separate if there was a way to plumb it together easily i probably would but there's like a stairwell in the way and there's just no easy way connecting it. I, I couldn't even find a way to run my RODI lines without going either through the attic or through like the ventilation system. I was like, yeah, both of those are a little bit sketchy. Mm. So I got a used RODI off my buddy. So I'm just gonna have a second RODI unit, one for each tank. So I don't have to worry about topping it off. Got it. Yep. Now, all right, cool. Really exciting. Um, besides frack tank, do you like, do you foresee having a different display tank? Like do you have any, plan to kind of merge them together upgrade anything like that mm, this is going to be a bit of like the frag tank is going to be like semi display semi frag tank part okay. of me wants to do a little mangrove and a little goonie on one side and have the rest of the frag tank but i don't know for nice. sure we'll, we'll see what happens that's cool mm. when i hear mangrove i'm like yes <laughs> so i've been into like uh plants and macro algae pretty recently still really really green mm -hmm. uh towards it but uh it's been fun it's like a different different chapter it's different that's good it's fun uh what about you any big projects coming up i think like mainly to get the 135 on track you yep. know to make sure it's uh it's good and mature but one tank i have been kind of like thinking about dreaming dreaming about actually it's going to be a garden yield tank i've been talking about for a long time Ooh. i would love to do something like that I i've been one. brainstorming what's the best way to do it and the reason this came back up again is because somebody i wish i remember the name i'm so sorry me, uh, messaged me or left a comment on instagram mm -hmm. saying that yo you know actually i think he messaged me uh you should do a drop off tank but mm -hmm. reverse it so that the garden yield has a deeper portion Ooh. i was like dude i thought about the same thing uh yes. and then i so yes. he sparked this again. I started thinking about it a little bit more, mm -hmm. but I figured, what if we tweak it? Because like, if we do a drop off tank and spin it, mm -hmm. the bottom portion is kind of wasted, right? Yeah. The po portion, right? So what if I do a tall tank, see like maybe like 30, 30 inches height or 32 inches height, which is still kind of, they have some like um, standard tank that's 32 inches in height, but I partition it vertically. Mm -hmm. maybe like 20 inch uh no don't need, don't need 20 inches maybe like eight inches partition it so the back side is all sand up to the eight inch but in the front is kind of like a drop off all the way down or or just because it'd be cool too if you did have the bottom sandy but do the back half like a lagoonish and then have like a big mangrove in the back and garden eels in the front yeah. and you could have like the the circular lagoon area with like corals on it i don't know that'd be cool Either way, though. I like that too. I like that too. Either way, or maybe the partition doesn't have to go all the way to the front. You can just yeah. kind of like cap off yep. two thirds away and then go around. So the front can be have something as well. So it's not just like straight sand. How much? I I know you need a decently steep like eight inches or whatever is like decently yeah. deep sand bed for them. Uh, but how much area do they need? Like, do they grow real much, or they stay in one spot roughly in their little cave? Or from what I understand, from what I remember, they kind of stay in the same spot. Um, but they do need, they do have a radius and it's, mm -hmm. a, it's a pretty generous radius. Yeah. If I remember right, it's like, this is six inches, 12 inches. So it's uh, not going to fit a lot of eels in there. No. But I need to do a, like a more research before I actually go down this route. But I've been thinking, I was like, okay, awesome. what are some way to do it? And this may be interesting, something different. Every time I go to public aquarium, they just make me happy and diving. I'm so excited when I find them diving I'm like going down there and like covering, trying to like wait for them to poke back up. I don't know. They make me yeah. happy. You should. That's cool. So I can live vicariously through you. <laughs> yeah. Man, I wish I could go. Yep. Um, but yeah, so if I if I were to set up in a tank, it would probably be something like that, I think. Mm -hmm. But we'll see We'll see if that actually gets to happen. No, that will be awesome. One day. One day it will happen. I'm yeah, sure. the challenge is also feeding them, too. Yeah. Are they tricky eaters? Tricky eaters, uh, they grab the food that float by them, and they eat small size food, like nice shrimps, brine shrimp, and stuff like that so i was even thinking maybe i can combine them with like mps mps in the front portion Ooh. of drop off so they don't need that much light that'd be kind of cool right that'd be sweet. create some kind of float that goes from like bottom up yep. to feed the coral feed the fish but the problem is what do you do with the food that does not get consumed do i do like one of those uh rollers to get those out of the system before they decompose or i am a huge fan of filter rollers they are like the best thing ever because you don't have to do socks it gets rid of all that waste before it breaks down so that's a yes 
Mm. Short answer, yes. I have not tried it, so oh. we'll see. We'll see. I've just been like a big refugium guy up to this point, even though I don't have one right now. Okay, so I do not currently have a filter roller on my water box, which for like the first time ever, and it's because I'm replacing the sump, so I didn't want to change my plumbing twice. This is really the real reason, because it's like metric plumbing instead of standard plumbing, so it's mm. not easy to change it. And I have to convert it and all this jazz. So I didn't want to change it twice. So it's it's been up for like six months without socks or filter roller or anything. And it slides away. Like I'm having definitely more nutrients in my tank. And when I have the mechanical filtration, nutrients are like way lower. So there's definitely a difference there from having it. So if you're feeding super heavy, I would definitely I am, advise yeah. on that one. Um, yeah, just for nutrient standpoint, it's going to help. Or just do decent water changes. I mean, other option. It's like, no. Yeah, like, no, no, none of that. <laughs> I'll, I'll look into that roller mat. Yeah, um, I don't know. I'm a huge fan. They just make your life so much easier, and you just do nothing. But yes. Do they? Okay, okay. Random question because mm-hmm. I've never used it. Do they smell? No, I'm just trying really to think of like all the food that get, get trapped up in the felt. I was worried about that, and they don't really. There's like, if you unroll it a little bit, you might smell it, but it kind of wraps it on itself, so it doesn't really be an issue. That being said. I have a new fancy sump that I ordered like ages ago. It's finally showing up hopefully tomorrow. And it may have a filter nice. roller and it may have a cover to keep it all contained. So stoked for it. That's cool. Yeah, so that's good. But they don't really smell. It's not a huge issue. Um, anyone do ozone? Sure do. Um, I use ozone on my 180, 200-gallon tank, whatever it is. Um, so I run it for four or five hours every night, just like a low dose. Probably, I think it's around 25 milligrams. Something like that. But yeah, no, I use it every night. Keeps your water nice and clear. Helps break down any organics, so any smell. It's kind of like carbon, but cheaper. I still use carbon once in a while, but ozone's kind of like, I do little amounts every day. In the middle of the night. Um, I would say it is. On a bigger tank, I'd say it is. What about you? Have you ever used ozone? I have not. Yeah? I just got like a cheap UV serializer. I mean, that's the level I'm at right now. Mm-hmm. And I'm amazed. <laughs> So yeah. eventually, maybe I'll start exploring the ozone and calcium reactor and all those uh, all, higher tech stuff. All the fancy stuff. You're getting fancy. No more budget uh, for slowly. you. You're fancy, man. Now. Enjoying it. Enjoying it. Yep. One step at a time. Yeah. Just taking it slow. It's good. It's a good way to go. Um, do you measure ORP? Yes, I do. Uh, I have my ozone to turn off if it ever hits 450. I've never hit 450. It's kind of like 380 to 410-ish, somewhere that bounces around. Uh, but yeah, it's never hit it because I don't. I think ozone, you don't want to have too much. Too much is bad, right? Because too much will oxidize stuff. It could break down stuff. It could be bad for your fish too much. But a small amount can do an amazing amount of clearing water. Um, <laughs> ozone, if you want to get the fake crystal clear water. I, it's not fake crystal clear. It's really crystal clear. Um, it's legit crystal clear. So, But yeah, no, I, I'm down for it because I just love to be able to look like six feet down a tank and have it super clear. So it makes me happy. You know, that's kind of like the question I have as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've Obviously, I just started using the UV sterilizer for a little bit and got the clear water. Yeah. But my, my question is, like, is the underlying cost still there? Or is the fact that I knock back the um, algae bloom or bacteria bloom, it'll give other things a chance to kind of take its place? So, I'm, that's the part I'm trying to figure out. So what UV? So UV also is kind of like ozone away, right? It helps okay. break down the yellow, the yellow pigments in your water. So okay. when you're looking down the far end, a lot of that stuff is those kind of like yellow pigments, which is kind of like organics in your water. And by breaking that down, you're, it's going to make it clear. Now you're also going to get, a, it's kind of like carbon in a way, right? It's going to absorb some of that stuff. That's why carbon will make your water clear when you put it in a fresh bag if you haven't used it in a while. And it's doing the same thing. It's breaking down that stuff. Carbon's more absorbing. If your ozone's more breaking it down, then I think it okay. makes your skimmer a bit easier for it to suck it out. But I, I just find you get such a ni- nice boost in that. Um, do I run? Oh, okay, the skimmer, the skimmer pulls it out too. Okay, I think that's yeah. a piece that I'm kind of missing. I was like, okay, so mm-hmm. where does this thing go? Or like if it's... Yeah, so I, I use okay. my skimmer as the ozone reactor. So there's a little ozone port on my skimmer and I just have it suck through the ozone into there. Got it. Yeah, but like I don't run mine 24-7. I run it for like four or five hours a night. Now if I had UV, I'd probably just let it run all the time. I've debated UV, but I don't know. I don't know if there's a benefit having UZ and ozone like crazy clear water, unless I'm trying to do all the other stuff. I've never had an LG issue really in my tank, so I don't know. You guys are your fancy toys. Yeah, that's the problem. There's too many toys. Too much stuff on the tank. Let, let me ask you this. Yes. If you can only take one piece of toy with you, what's your favorite? What would you what would you kinda like hold on to and 
not let go above and beyond the normal stuff like anything anything that you have right now but one like, piece of equipment you need a light you need a power head like oh, just one favorite you can replace all the other things right with yeah. like maybe other things but not this exact same one is there one of your one piece of favorite equipment that makes your life just so much better i really do appreciate the auto testing and not testing all the time <laughs> which <laughs> one the budget reefing there, gone. there are a couple ones um elkatronic I, that one it would be harder to run a tank without it because i've gotten so lazy with te testing now it's got used to it right yeah, yeah. like I love my Vortex. I love no wires in the tank. Then again, I ran the AI Nero on my other one, and that was an awesome pump. But yeah, that makes my life the easiest would probably be the auto testing. I mean, auto top off, but I mean, I could swap different brands. I'm not like married to one or whatever, but like I do appreciate the auto testing of whatever brand it is for whatever it is. I mean, I, I have an Alcatronic, and you have the same one. That's been solid for me. So yeah, I do appreciate nice. it. Nice. Yep. I know. Can't wait, for the, can't wait for the Mastertronic to come out. Yeah, I'm stoked for that too. Yeah. Yep. Nitrate phosphate. The nitrate test, man. Oh, Won't so, that be nice? I don't want to do it anymore. Somebody take it away from me. Well, I, well, it's it's okay. So full disclosure, I had the reef bot as well, which is also testing nitrates and phosphates, and it's like amazing not to test it. But but I'm now like, no, I have to test the other tank. What is this garbage of testing again? Ah. Oh, so. that's true. I mean, I, I wish the well, I only have the Alcatronic. I wish it can t test multiple tanks. I had this, obviously my tank is like not in the same room, but I had this whole plan device i was like okay if i have like a little vial and it like you have a doser and it like alternates which one it fills up with water that day and i was trying to like do oh, this big man. convoluted thing and i never bothered but I, I was i was working on it. i'm like hmm, how could this one test both tanks without me intervening and stuff but it'd be cool that would be cool that would yeah. be cool but hey now you got two units yeah exactly but now i need to worry about nutrients and stuff so eventually i'm holding up for the master tronic on the other one <laughs> yeah Seems like seems like they're close. I mean, the he's a gift impression that it's it's close. It's coming. Yeah. Yep. But yeah, no, the auto testing is such a big thing. Nice. Uh, what about you? What's your one piece of equipment? I think Radeon. Yeah. <laughs> I'll grab the light and run. <laughs> I think the Radeons. I don't know why. You uh, have something something about. I just like it. They're awesome. Okay. That's a good way to explain this. Okay, so I love mine too. Love them. Um, now, one, I just find you get such nice colors out of your tank with it. So, with a cheap light and expensive light, this is something I'm just going to throw it here because it's in my matter right now. So, both will grow corals. However, with lights like a Radeon that has lots of different color diodes on it, is going to give you better color rendition of your tank. Now, when you look at something, you're seeing the light that's reflected back at you. Like, you see a, the green leaves on a tree because it's re that chlorophyll is reflecting that green back at you now if you're not now white light's full spectrum so it's all colors mixed together now when you have these individual targeted things like you know like the cyans and the greens and certain colors of light are going to better give you a, a pop or a more vibrant color to reflect it back at you so because it has all those in it you kind of like enhance certain colors in your tank it just gets i don't know it just gets this extra like vibrance that i love about it so yeah I agree. Anyways, that was my long-winded response. Um, kind of like a add-on to it is mm -hmm. that if it was the older Radeons before the Mobius, mm -hmm. the, the phone apps, yep. I would have picked something else. Yeah, I probably would have picked my long turkey baster. <laughs> Dude, it's the best thing ever. Hold on, let me show you. <laughs> All the gear. You're like, here's my four dollar turkey gear. baster. This is the thing that I could that not live solid. without, like feeding corals and stuff like that. I don't have to get my hand wet. This is mm -hmm. the best thing ever. It makes me do it a little bit more. Um, nice. Because like back then, when I had to tweak the light, I have to like USB plug in. And yeah. so I don't have a reef link. Oh, uh, but now it's so, it makes so make things so easy. Yeah. I really appreciate it when I you take photos. Just like tap the scene and that's it. Yeah. I think that's that's where I see it was a deal for me. Just ease of use. Okay. But yeah, so that's that's my pick. Okay. The lights are the turkey baster. All right. Okay. Here, here, here's another one that's made my life easier. On the new tank, I have I got the the Versas doing automatic water changes, so I don't have to do water changes anymore. Like I manually oh, did one after see. Chemi Clean. <laughs> okay. But on the daily basis, like I do not do regular ones unless I'm dosing something in a special reason and just have it doing five thousand mils a day every day. It's amazing. Nice. Love it. So that um, love auto water changes. If you guys ever have the option to do it, yes. Just say yes, please, and make your life easier. I, I thought about it, and then I saw all the different things I had to do to it. Mm -hmm. 
and it, Jim offered to help too. But I'm just so I'm so afraid that there's so many f- possible failure points <laughs> that I was like, all right, I'm just gonna top off the container every like two three days. So it's not it's not terrible. Mm-hmm. It would be nice to not do it, but I'd rather not risk flooding the carpets because like my whole basement is carpeted. So yeah, my floors are carpeted too. But okay, so if you have a parasolic pump, it's crushing the line, so it can't suck it out, right? Yep. So what I do is I suck and add at the same time. So my water level of my sump never changes. It doesn't affect my auto top off. So it's super low risk. Now, if you want it to be extra safe, there's a couple of things that you could do, obviously. Like if you have, do you have, do you have an aquarium control in your tank? I do. I have a GHL Mini. Okay. Oh, there you go. Perfect. So you could have a, like a high level float switch to turn it off if it ever raised up. Uh, another thing you could do is you could have it only suck from like an inch down the water, so it could only suck mm, so much okay. out, right? There's lots that's of little things point. you can do as fail safes. That's a good point. Or have a float switch, you know, if that's ever tripped, it could turn off your auto water changer. Yeah, you know, I mean, I started looking into it, and then people were saying that, um, okay, I don't, I shouldn't run my ODI water units like a short burst due to like TDS trip and like st- stuff like that. After that point, I'm just like, all right, forget it. I'm just gonna hot buckets. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, I've been extremely torn on this one because I, I was debating if I hook up the RODI direct to the tank or do I have like a little auto top off container in the middle that it fills. So yeah. I, I've been extremely torn because I was going to hook it up direct to the tank and then I had Mark on one week and he's like, no, you're going to kill your membranes. And I'm like, is it really that uh, big of a difference? Uh, but anyways, I broke down and I bought a little 10 gallon little acrylic auto top off container. So I'm going to put that in the middle. But I'm thinking I might get that Toonzy rodi controller and put that inside my top off so it just auto fills itself whenever it's empty nice all right well i'm gonna see what you do and then maybe in a couple <laughs> couple years down the road i'll work up the courage and uh diy skills to join you guys yep don't worry there's a little away we'll make it happen it'll be good yeah um, lot, lots of things to do along the way so i'll keep myself busy oh exactly Slowly work my way up heck yes heck yes a uh, couple questions a minute ago someone was asking about trace elements and dosing if you overdose it it's not always the best. Like, bad things can happen. Some can take over. I honestly, I haven't measured trace elements in so long, but I just do, like, a half dose. Like, it says, oh, dose four capfuls. I'm like, meh, here's two. And I just do that every, like, mm. whenever I think about it. Not very regularly. But so I randomly dose it, but I do, like, a half dose. Because um, it could have some. Then, you know, you're at least not limited on it. Uh, someone's asking what skimmer I'm going to use on the new one. I'm probably just going to use the NIOS 160s on this tank. Again, I'm stealing a lot of equipment off this tank for the new tank just because it'll save me a bunch of money because I already have it. Uh, and someone's asking about plumbing figured out. Basically, I bought some fancy purple pipe. I was going to do purple and gray. I've never done that combination. However, I, I, I was half debating if I put in two return nozzles or one on this tank. But I'm like, I have to buy more pipe if I buy a second one. So I don't know. Still torn. We'll see. Okay. So all the ones that were in my mind that I read in the last few minutes. Nice. Yep. Uh, one, one random question over here. Because you mentioned trace elements. Mm-hmm. Do, you, do you normally run ICP tests? Or just like when you encounter something? Once in a while. I'm, I'm, t- like, and if, I'm too cheap to run them all the time. Like okay. sometimes that shows if I get like a good deal on one, I'll grab one and stuff, but I don't do it normally. Is there like certain brands that you tend to go for? Any favorite? I, I, just okay. whenever, whatever's I've, on sale? I've only done one. <laughs> I've, I've, oh, really? I've only ever done one ICP test. And that was the Triton one, which I had. And I have like freeicp.com or whatever that one is. I got one of those sitting on my desk or my closet or somewhere. So I'll probably do one eventually. And I'll probably yeah. do it on like the big tank and see. Just to kind of get an idea of where things are at. Because it's auto water cool. change now. It's calcium reactor only. And then I, I've i been randomly dosing some of the Brightwell traces. Like some weeks I do it a couple times. Other weeks it doesn't happen. It's randomly. So I'm just kind of curious to see if my randomness slash consistency and where everything's at. Yeah, I'm pretty bad about it. Usually I just do ICP when there's something terribly wrong, and I know that's probably not the best way to do it. Mm-hmm. I, yeah, I think it's a good idea. Like, in a perfect world, maybe every six months I'd do one just to, like, see where things are at and make sure nothing's right. trending down the hole to somewhere bad or, you know, make sure I'm not overdosed something. But, yeah, I don't know. So even, so here, here's the other thing. Like, even with ICP tests, you could send in one to two different companies and get different results, right? Like, they're not, like, the gospel. They're not perfect. They have an error margin in it, just like our hobby test kits. So it's good for a baseline, and if you really want a value of it, I think you'd have to do them fairly frequently and use it more for, like, trending than anything else. But, so, I don't know. Once in a while, I'd say I'd do it. But I wouldn't say it's, like, the end-all, be-all. Like, it's it's a good baseline window of your tank. Yeah, I mean, that's one thing I kind of recently went into. It's like, okay, um, we got all these like water testers. How do we know they're accurate? Mm-hmm. And uh, some people mentioned that certain test kits 
actually ship out with standards. Yep. I think uh, somebody mentioned like Aqua Forest, which I did not know about. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, that's kind of cool. So I'm, I really want to get some standard just to test how accurate the test kits I have well, right now is. And how accurate are you testing? How consistent are you with yes. the things? Like, rather, it's better to be consistent than it is to be like as accurate, right? Even, you yes. know, maybe your Elk's 8, maybe it's 9. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter as long as you're consistent with how you test. And whatever number it gives you is like fairly consistent, right? Like make sure yep. you're putting it to the same line on the vial. If you're just a Hannah checker, like I always try to make sure I put it the same way in the, the thing, like all these little stupid things, but it's just making your shirt like consistency is king with that. Well, you know, that, that's funny. We started talking about this because that's one thing we did not touch on, like for budget reefing, testing, test kits. Yeah. Um, what is the minimum? What are the minimum things that you test on a budget? Like, what test kits would you buy? Because I have gotten asked that question before. Alkalinity. <laughs> okay. Hannah Checker. Okay. So, the, okay, cheapest test kit in my eyes that's worth it. Um, the Red Sea Foundations or whatever it is, you get calcium, elk, and mag for like 40 or 50 bucks. Like, that's your best mm. bang for your buck for like price per test for the kit, get everything started. Um, now, which ones I like the most? I would buy a Hannah Alkalinity Tester and a Hanna phosphate tester. Um, those two I think are good ones to have. Um, now, the Hanna calcium tester I think is like super expensive for the refills I find. So I, I hardly ever use it because I'm just like, ah, that one's expensive. And then like the red, I'll use Red Sea for magnesium. I usually use the Red Sea for calcium. If I, once in a while, I'll splurge on myself and use the, <laughs> the Hanna one. But yeah, and then nitrates. Nitrates are pain in the butt to test. I don't do it very often, but yeah. I have the Red Sea one for that. But main three, like if I was only buy one test kit, I'd buy alkalinity. Um, but for your best bang for buck, the Red Sea Foundation three pack for 40, 50 bucks or whatever, I think that's probably your best bang for your buck to like start testing. What do you think? I did not even know about that one. So that's uh, fantastic. Um, yep. I would have to check that one out. The Perfect. Red Sea Foundation, you say, right? I think so. I've taken all mine out of the boxes and I got like a little like kit, like a little tool parts bin when I put all my tests yeah. in. So I, I saw know. that. That was awesome. So handy, because then you don't have a bazillion boxes of you, right? Here's your one little suitcase yep. thing, open it up, and here's all your tests inside. It's a good way to go. I still have all my test kits in boxes. I, I was like, oh, man, these are so pretty and so expensive. Just keep them in box, make sure they're in, like, mint conditions. And yeah, I did that for a I, while. I should do what you do. Yeah, like, a makes sense. Two kits. Eventually, I, like I turfed it, turfed all those cases, and I'm like, all right, here it is. Here's, here's the testing. And then another, okay, completely random, but another thing I find yep. really handy is I bought like a cheap magnetic stir for like 30 bucks or whatever off Amazon. And that for test kits, pff, amazing. Because, you know, when you, you do a drop and you shake it, another drop you shake yeah. it, you drop that little pill in, turn it on, it's like, whoop, whoop. You put your drops in, it's like instant color change. And like, or, or even for mixing additives, like I'll have like a little two liter beaker thing on there. And then mm -hmm. just, you know, like magnesium, that's a pain in the butt to mix. It takes ages to dissolve. So you just turn on your magnetic stir, walk away, come back five minutes later, it's crystal clear, dissolved, ready to roll. So. You know, I have seen those, but I have not really like, I'm not sold on it yet. Maybe yeah. because I don't know what I'm missing out on. <laughs> Similar to like auto testing. Yeah. But maybe one of these days I'll see the light and be like, hey, yeah. All right. Let me know when you need to be talked into something. <laughs> right. Yes, sir. But I don't know. I, I, I like, I, I like, I'm obviously super techie. My job's in tech. You know, I'm obviously a super techie guy. So I like automation. I like these little gadgety things that make my life easier. So definitely. No, I think it's fantastic. I mean, like, mm -hmm. I feel like a lot of people are not, uh, we don't know what's out there. Mm -hmm. So Fair like so. techie guys like you, Jim, et cetera, mm -hmm. like you guys bring in all the new stuff. I'm like, oh, these are cool. You know, even things that we have not thought about. Somebody mentioned like no love for celiferts. I use celiferts, magnesium. Uh, calcium sometimes yep. as a double, like just to double check some values. Do you use any Celifert kits? Um, I have the Alkalinity one, which is good. I'll use that sometimes to double check stuff with the Alkatronic just because they always swear by it. They're like, have you used the Celifert? I was like, okay, fine. So I finally yeah. broke down and bought one and it works well and I use that for double check. Yeah. Um, it, it does take a little bit though to do yep. the little drop and shake, drop and shake. Mm -hmm. I think it's... It does. Uh, so a couple people have talked about the Magnetic Surge. You can DIY one really easy too. Um, honestly, they're cheap enough. I just buy one because they're 20, 30 bucks. But you have an old PC fan, you can glue two little magnets onto it. Just make sure they're, like, level so it's balanced. And you use a little fan controller and, like, make one. Like, I made my own oh, back in the day. Uh, interesting. I, I made my own Kelkster way back when. It's, like, a little one of those on the bottom. And, yeah, it's, it's, they're pretty easy to make. But they're, they're also not very expensive for, like, the cheap ones. So Yeah. That's Got always, it. It's always the DIY hurdle. It's like, I could build this or I could buy it for, like, 20, 30 bucks more. Is it worth it? That's always right. a thing. Ooh. I, I'm the guy that buys it. I'm like... <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> just... 
I usually DIY it and then eventually I'll buy it. I, I'm, I'm weird like that. I'm like, ah, oh, proof of concept, try it. Okay, it's good. I like it. Okay, I'll spend the money on it later on. But mm. um, check reaction expiration dates. There you go. I've bought mm. test kits and I've like went to use them and they're like, oh, it's almost expired already. Or they're expired. It's like, ah. Now, how much it matters if it's expired, I sometimes question. But like, I don't know. Like, is it just like 5% less accurate? I don't know. But I totally use expired ones, and I don't know, they seem close enough, as long as they're not too crazy. But yeah, ch check the dates, if, especially if you're buying in the store, make sure you're not buying one that's on its way out. Yep. Yep. Good reminder. Yep, exactly. All right, man, what else you got? Anything else good? Hmm, it... nothing off the top of my head. I mean, like, the, uh, the I guess, like, next project was the thing that I thought uh, I kind of want to ask you, because I know you always have some, like, crazy ideas oh always. Uh, oh i do want to i do want to ask you about your buddy's tank the one that was kind of like the floating whole floating yeah how's no, that doing overall good it's still on the wall has not fallen off so we did well <laughs> on reinforcing um he's having a little bit of an algae battle but i think it's good otherwise how he, how was the light hung was it just like hung in the front or what's no it was super minimal so i haven't seen it so we changed it okay so he, okay. he 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 upgraded to radions already he he fell in fell into the addiction and went all up but um, originally we took two AI primes and we like chopped it shorter and chopped off the bottom and made a super minimalist mount on the wall. Oh, wow. And I think he tried to reuse, I don't know if he reused the AI mount somehow or if he made other ones, but I'll try and make it there sometime in the next few weeks and film an update on it. That was cool. That was a cool tank. Um, yep. Initially when I saw it, I'm like, oh my God, I'm going to have like, but then it looks really secure. It looks fantastic yep. once like the water and rock goes in. It, I just it, wish it was like a floating scape as well. Oh, I know. That would be wicked. We thought about it. Like, we I want to do a few floating shelves and stuff, but then yeah. it was like, this is like the middle of like pandemic time. You just couldn't get anything. And we just ended up doing that. But um, yeah, no, it's super cool though. Like, it's a really unique design, and I'm stoked that we decided to be crazy and go for it. <laughs> That's cool. That's something that I love mm -hmm. seeing, you know? I, I like weird things. So I was like 100% supporting him. Like, yeah, let's do it. And yeah, no, it's. <laughs> It's, it's so funny when I posted, like, I did an Instagram post about it. I had, like, a bazillion comments between Facebook and Instagram. And they're, they're like, that's amazing. Or, like, it's going to crash and burn. And, yeah. yeah, still going strong. So it's awesome. <laughs> that is cool. Yep. Exactly. So I'll do that soon. <laughs> I had nightmares for that guy. <laughs> yeah. <I'm really> <laughs> yep. All right. If I missed any questions, feel free to ask them again. And I apologize if I did. But... This is good. We're completely off the random topic now. And it's been an hour and a half, so probably could be too much longer because I don't want to keep Moki all night, but it's all always good. fun chatting, Reef. I love it. Uh, what else I got for projects? I don't know. I'm trying to consolidate tanks. That's my goal right now. My goal is to have two tanks instead of, like, many. You got two right now, right? Well, one that's not wet. Technically. Well, I also got, like, this temporary tank... And then I got like the burgia. I don't know. I got so many little ones. So we'll see. Got it. Yep. Oh, I got a question for you, actually. Um, yes. I want to get your opinion. Okay. So I'm thinking about stock list for the 135. Yep. Uh, I'm between three options in terms of like the main fish for the tank. Mm -hmm. So I'm thinking about either a uh, blue throat trigger. Yep. A male one. Or mm -hmm. a, um, a pair or trio of the pyramid butterfly, which I know you have. Ooh, also nice. Kay. Or a coal tank. <laughs> Look at that face. that face. How big is your like, tank? How big is your tank? Right now, right, uh, it's 135 gallon, uh, four foot by 30 inches, and mm -hmm. I think it's like 20 inches high. Yep. Right now, I have a baby hippo tank, which is like, I think two inches at this point, a pair of clowns, and mm -hmm. a silver belly ross. Okay. So, pyramids are really cool, and I like them, and a trio of them would look wicked. Now, they also can get big, so this is like a long-term problem, but they would look wicked, but eventually they may get a little big for your tank. Um, Got it. Blue jaw, blue throat triggers are awesome. I have used to have one for years, and they were super cool fish. Um, triggers will eat your hermit crabs in the comments. Mine actually never did. I've never caught it eating one. Um, super cool fish. Do love those guys. And what was the other option? Coal tank? Coal tank, yeah. That's more like a kind of like a worker fish and... So, do you, do you have any tangs or no? Uh, a blue tang. A hippo okay. tang. Okay. It's a tiny little guy. They're kind of slackers on the eating. The cold tang is going to be a much better, like, algae eater, since you leave your right. lights on while cycling. But, <laughs> but they are super cool fish. Um, but they're, they're good workers. 
Is this an aura situation? Yes. Yeah, there's no way I can add off them. And the other thing to be added to the equation is that I do have a clam, and mm -hmm. I plan to add more clams down the road. Um, now, in terms of size, let me just... Um, mm -hmm. In terms of size, I have no problem kind of like rehoming the fish. Yep. Because in the past, I have done that, and mm -hmm. I have no problem catching fish. So that's one thing to be considered as well. School of butterflies would look really cool. Um, butterfly fish sometimes can nip at clams and other stuff, though, so that's the only hesitant part right there. But I do love them, and I do think they look super cool. Like, I have, like, a massive like football size climb in my tank. So as much as I'd like to, I'm like, yeah, I don't know. And like so many yeah. cans, which are all like temptation for butterfly fish. Right. So that's the tricky bit. Cold tang is going to be your safest option. Um, triggers are pretty safe too. I'd say overall blue throat is one of the most reef safe triggers. Can you tell me a little bit more about your experience with the blue throat? Cause I'm kind of leaning a little bit more towards that way. I feel like it's kind of bio low is a little bit smaller compared to like mm -hmm. two or three butterflies and seems a little bit safer than the butterflies, but still yeah. have that. Cool factor. Coral wise, it'll be safer. Uh, blue throats, in general, they're one of the most reef safe, so they've been really easy. Like, no issue there. Like, mine ain't like a pig, though, so bio load, who knows? Questionable. But um, mm -hmm. it's really cool they swim too, because if you watch the fins, like, they'll both swim like one way, then the other way. Like, it's really cool how they swim. I don't know. They're, they're super cool fish. I think you'd like it. Awesome. You're going to get a blue throat. I, I can see <laughs> in your eyes. <laughs> well, now the trick is to find one, right? Yeah. We'll, they're they're we'll such see. a unique fish. I mean, they're, they're a little. Yeah, they're a little bit more common than some of the other ones, so hopefully mm -hmm. I'll find one. But I want a small one. That's I think that's a trick. Yeah. They have cool personalities. Now, the only one thing is, at least my blue throat was a jumper. Like, if, like, I hit a wire and the lights flash, he'd be like, boo, out of the tank. Like, I think he jumped, like, three times, and I put him back in. So oh, definitely man. want a top on if you have one. Do you have a top on your tank? I do not. Not yet. Oh, well, you should get one. Because I don't have any OBs. Well, I have a Ross, but he never really jumped. Yeah, fair. Knock on wood. I have a Ural brace. I feel like, okay, maybe okay. But I think for the blue throat, you think it would probably be safer with a top? Yes. Only when he got spooked. Not normally. But if something happened and got spooked, whew, like mine jumped like three times and I put him back in every time. Wow. <laughs> yeah. So. And did they, did they hit the edge and then jump out or did they kind of just like straight up jump? I do not know. It all happened okay, so, so fast. You weren't, you weren't there when it happened. Yeah. You have like, a Euro brace in your tank. I can see it, I think. Yeah. 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 I have about, it's like what, three inches? Three yeah. and a half? Yeah. So you're, you're a lot safer with a Euro brace. But still always a risk. Yeah, but got it. Um, if you do get a top, D&D uh, &D jump guards what I have on both my tanks. And they're, they're awesome because they're very minimalistic, which I like. That's what I have on a 45 as well. Yep. That's the one you still have to cut yourself, right? And yep. kind of sits inside. You do. That's but cool. But the, the whole frame has like a little lip around it. So it just insets with the <coughs> glass. And it's like almost level. So I don't know. It's very minimal. Yeah, dude. I mean, I, I like it. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm debating. I'd go with uh, yep. something like that again or one of those uh, acrylic top um, manufacturer. I think like top lit. Yeah. They, they may make some some too. I don't know. I'm still debating. I debated those two. I'm always touring because I, I don't like having a top, but I think you should yeah. have a top. So I always try to make my tops like super minimalistic. Like the less I notice it, the better. Yeah. I'm also holding off on the top until I get one more piece of equipment that I actually bought it? two weeks ago. What? What? Uh, it's kind of random. It's the uh, Avos plank. It's the auto feeder. Oh, like the frozen one? It's not the frozen one. It's uh, okay. So explain uh, this. It's uh, the company is created like uh, in Virginia, I believe, like many yeah. years ago. So they're local, first of all. I'm like, ah, it's all over. So this project has been in um, in the go in, in the in the pipeline, I guess, for like ten plus years already. They've been trying okay. to build like a nice uh, auto feeder. Like yep. right now I have an Eheim that just mm -hmm. kind of dropped the pallets. The problem is like the pallets always float at the water surface, right? Mm -hmm. uh, this one, they actually have a little tube. There's a yep. feeding tube. So the thing drop in the feeding tube. Mm -hmm. And then they actually have a, I think they have a pump to kind of like make sure the pallets or whatever food is mm -hmm. uh, the flake actually sinks and be nutrient buoyant first before yep. they release it out. So it's kind of cool. And they can do like micro feeding. So mm -hmm. it's not a big chunk. They can feed like really fine particles and stuff like that. Yep. So I think um, I'm okay. hoping I can feed small flake food or like weave roids or some powder food as well and maybe okay. down the road i can even give like mps a try all right so now we're, we're gonna next level this one okay yeah. now why not try putting your auto feeder in your sump so it feeds in front of your return pump so you have nothing on the top and it goes okay. through your return pump and fires back into the tank and there's nothing visible yeah and your return pump goes psh, fires everywhere and it's like super quick broadcast feeding all right let's cancel that order <laughs> <laughs> So that was no, that's a good idea. That's, a, that's actually a good idea. No, I've done, I, I've done, I, I had like five revisions of it. 
and like I had like funnels and I was like, oh, sometimes the food doesn't sink. And I added like a little water thing into like spiral it in there. At the end of the day. Oh, wait, 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 hold, on, hold on. Let's talk through it. Okay. If it's so good, how come nobody did it? What's it I from? did it. <laughs> You've been doing it? Yeah. I don't, I'm not going to have what? auto. Fe- not, not, I haven't done it on my new tank yet, but I will eventually. Okay. I'm not going to have auto feeders cluttering up my beautiful rimless tank. Come on now. Gotta wait, hide hold on it. a second. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. All right. Let me just make sure I get it straight. So right before you turn pump into some section, yep. you have an auto feeder there, and you got some kind of funnel to, to kind of funnel the food. And I, these are previous revisions. Simplest way ever, power head, power head in the sump. No, power yeah. head is key because you don't want it to settle before it gets sucked into the return pump process as nutrients. So you have a decently strong power head in the sump, and it keeps okay. your food circling until it gets sucked in your return chamber. Like that power okay. in there is key. Like I, instead of the funnels and all of those other bazillion things, that that's by far the simplest, best way. So it drops through it in, keeps it spinning, and eventually gets sucked into return pump, blowing your tank, and like pellets will start firing all over your tank, and the fish go crazy. Yeah. Nothing, nothing huh. cluttering up those clean lines. You gotta keep the yeah. tank sexy. <laughs> Interesting. That would probably like help with uh, getting some pods into the display tank as well. Just kind of also keeping the sump clean. Mm-hmm. That's a good way to go. It's. Mm. I'm trying to think. I mean, there's no way for it to clog up the return line and stuff because, like, food particles are so small. They're and... so tiny, and they're soft. Like, it's not an issue. Like, and then when it happens, the fish get all excited, and they're, like, trying to catch pellets as they randomly start shooting out over the next few minutes by the time they get sucked in. I don't know. I always like doing that. I think it's fun. Is there any reason you, well, do you drop the food, like, right, like, say power heads right here, right, or return mm-hmm. pumps right here? What if you drop it right here, like, right in front of the inlets? Some will go in, some won't. Like, it all depends, right? Okay. That's, yeah, that's with, true. With the power head, it just kept stuff floating until it got sucked in. It, it almost took a little bit longer, but then nothing settled. So that was the big yeah. thing. And then it's just like randomly feeding your fish every like four or five seconds, and then a pellet or two fires up. So it's kind of like dribble feeding it. So it's, I don't know, I thought it was a good way to do it. I like it. That's a good idea. Yeah. Thank you. Man, and I just bought that 200 bucks. <laughs> I, well, put that Which in your I'm sump. Which I'm sure it's going to be cool as well. Put that in your sump, then you could use it to feed small food, squirrel food, all kinds of stuff. Still good. Don't worry. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good idea. I'm, I'm probably going to like try that because I should. have a spare power head. I have the Yihan feed air. It's moved to the... Mm-hmm. I like it. I Heck like yeah. you for a reason. <laughs> Perfect. No, it's good. Good idea. Thank you. But yeah, no, I was like obsessed with all this stuff. But then I think because of everything going on, I haven't left my house really on trips anymore. So I'll, I'll yeah. set it up eventually. But but yeah, this is the best way to do it and then without keeping everything super sleek looking and... I like to hide everything. It's all about clean lines with me because it's like my living room art, right? This is the tank. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I do like your setups, especially the peninsula one. It just looks so clean. I was like, how do you hide all those wires? Thank you. You know? Okay. Great stuff. Yeah. Kirstie, good good point. Uh, just don't have a return teed into the manifold. Yeah. So if you're, mm. if you're feeding into like a manifold of reactors, you're going to be feeding them, which is no good. Um, yep. I've always used a separate pump for reactors, mainly because... Like with the bean animal stuff, if your reactors were to get clogged or change it, then your overflow get noisier. And I've always just used a separate pump just to make sure it always stayed consistent and quiet. It's not a huge issue, but food for thought. Cool. I don't know. Yeah, somebody mentioned like, oh, I do that with uh, reverbs already. Man. Yeah. You got some smart, smart reefers out there. You guys got to share yeah. more. Heck yeah. It's probably in the archives of old videos. <laughs> I know I've done videos on it like probably like three years ago now, but yeah, that's good. Cool. Oh, no. Uh, what else you got? What other questions? What other battles can we solve? I think that's the latest one. That's, um... I was going to share exciting news, and then now I'm like, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> I have to look up what this fancy feeder is later. Send me a link later. Yeah. I want to check this yeah. out. It's called Avos, uh the Plank, I think is what it's called. But it's cool. Avos Plank? plank not the cheapest it's like 200 dollars for auto feeder so it took me a little bit to uh commit to it but yeah. i was like oh, okay it's kind of cool and then uh, and then now Devin tells me this well it will still be cool and you can still do it still that be- yeah, yeah, yeah it still works this is just yes. other other things to try with yep F- food, totally food for thought um uh how about coating steel stands okay so the best way to co- coat a steel stand is going to be powder coating it um Again, that's not always the cheapest. Now, if you are not in a rush, you can usually leave something to be powder coated with the place and just get them to do it when they do a run of that color anyways, and it'll cost you like half the price. So that's the good way to get stuff powder coated on more of a budget. Um, I have spray painted stands. It 
it just doesn't, it holds up over well, but if it, you drip on it, eventually it's going to eat through that paint and you'll have to get a little sand and retouch it up. So powder coating is the best way to do it. Um, the rubber paint, again, same thing. Like, I don't know how well it holds up long term. Truck liner paint, that probably would work well. I've never used it though. But powder coating, honestly, if, if you can get it done or just drop it off, be like, yep, yeah, whenever you do it, might maybe a month, whatever, but whenever they do that color run, it's going to be like half the price. Like, you can always be able to deal with that. Uh, I still can't find that feeder. I'm probably spelling it wrong. Oh, here. Okay. I'm curious now. Uh, yeah, on boats, they use, um, mind blanking on the name. I had, like, the super, like, back in the day. And, like, when I was in college, I bought a CDU for, like, 500 bucks. And I had, like, a hole in the hall. And I fixed it up and did all that stuff on it. It was fun. Oh, the plank auto fish feeder. Okay, I found it. Got it? Cool. Oh, from Avast. Avast Marine makes it. Oh, you said a oh, Avast. That's what you said. I heard a Voss. Ah. Oh, sorry. Well, that's pretty My cool. terrible pronunciation. Okay. Uh, here, I'll drag her over for a second. So that's what that baby looks like. Yep. Well, oh, that's pretty cool. They totally 3D printed that too. They made their own design. Oh, very, very nice. All right. Let me know how it works. Now, you might be able okay. to get a wit. Now, here's, a th here's another food for thought. Because you got your little chimney going right down to it, you might be able to have your chimney thing directly over the input to your return pump. I mean, you don't even need a power head, right? That might just yep. work and suck it right away. So I would try that first with that one. That would be cool. I know. I, so, I'll try that. Yeah, exactly. Beautiful. And All right, buddy. I think I've had my dinner sitting here for like an hour, and it's pretty cold. <laughs> so I think I'm going to call her for today. But it's been fun as always. Thank you for coming on. Thank you for having me. It's always a good time to chat. Yep, always, always. We've got to do this a little more often. Um, yeah. Ho hopefully you guys enjoyed it. It was a bit of a longer one today, but it was a good chat and lots of little random stuff. If you guys did enjoy it, as always, hit that like button. If you don't know who this fine gentleman is, make sure you check out the Inappropriate Reefer YouTube channel. And, yeah, we'll catch you guys on next week's live stream. Thanks again, Mookie.